Well, good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the regularly scheduled meeting of the Oklahoma City Planning Commission for January 14th, 2021. Glad everybody could be here. Uh, we are expecting, there he is, Commissioner LaForge is here, so in case you guys are counting heads, uh, we certainly have a quorum, and if you had a variance today, we have six. I had asked staff to reach out to you if you had a variance on today's docket to let you know there would only be six commissioners. Uh, hopefully, that outreach was made. Um, certainly, if you have a variance or you're in need of one and there's a problem, we would entertain a continuance uh, given the uh, limited number of folks we have here today. But with that said, uh, we'll get started. A couple of quick uh, reminders or announcements. If you would, uh, please remember to do all of us a favor and wear your mask the entire time you're here. If you haven't signed up to speak and you'd like to be heard on a matter before the Planning Commission today, these sign-up sheets are out front. I would encourage you to fill that out and provide it to staff. And then at the appropriate time, I can call on you to make sure that uh, if you have an opinion you wish to share with us, that you're afforded the opportunity to do that. Um, if you would, I don't know what our attendance is like today, but if you notice there are people standing out in the hall and your item has already been heard and you don't have anything else on the agenda today, I politely ask you just to at least leave the chamber. You're certainly welcome to stay in City Hall and listen outside. We just want to make the chamber available to those folks that may wish to be heard on an item that's forthcoming on the agenda. Um, looks like everybody's doing a good job with the pew rules, so that's outstanding. If you would, make sure and silence your cell phones. And with that, I'll call the meeting to order. Our first order of business is to receive the minutes uh, of the December 12th, 2021 Planning Commission meeting. Somebody, anybody, I just need a motion to receive. Second. Just waiting for the computer. Push your button there. Push your button. Are those registering? Yep. Mary just needs to push your button. I have a motion by Commissioner Coffey and a second by Commissioner Privet. Please cast your votes when available. There we go. And the minutes are received. There we go. Yeah, everybody's accounted for. Excellent. Uh, next order of business are continuance requests. I think we have a number of those. Mr. Butler, you want to read those for us? Yes. Uh, the first is item 31, PUD 1800, defer to January 28th. Item 32, item C 7254, defer to January 28th. Uh, number 44, item PC 107110, defer also to January 28th. Item 45, SP 545, defer to February 11th. Number 46, item PUD 1790, defer to February 11th. Number 47, item C 7227, defer to February 11th. Number 48, item C 7229, defer to February 11th. Item 49, PUD 1786, defer to February 11th. Item 50, C7230, also defer to February 11th. Number 51, item SP550, defer to March 11th. Uh, number 52, SPUD 1278 has been withdrawn. And number 53, item 7262 has been uh, requested to defer to February 11th. Thank you very much. That was. Uh quite a number of cases. Is there anyone that wanted to be heard on one of those items today? Okay, seeing nobody, I will take a motion on the uh, uncontested continuance request is read. Motion to, uh, move. never mind. I know. We used to do this by voice. Instead, you get this awkward silence followed by a population on the screen as to who's doing what. So just be patient with us. We'll get through it. I have a, uh, a motion by Commissioner Hinkle, which is seconded by Commissioner Coffey. Please cast your votes. Cell phone violator. Come on, Jared. Jared, planning staff, somebody. Be called out. Those continuances are approved. Uh, I believe we have some, uh, a couple, at least one I know, of additional continuances that were requested. Is that correct? Yes, there's one. That's item 34, SPUD 1277, request to continue to January 28th. SPUD 1277. Was there anybody that wanted to be heard on that item today? That was a late uh, continuance request. So. Seeing nobody, I'll take a motion on that continuance. So, 
or, or not. <laughs> well, I'd like no button. Yeah, just our system's not populating staff. I'll second. Okay, I have a motion and a second. Please cast your votes when available. And item 34 is continued. Uh, just as a precaution, is there anybody else that had a continuance that they wanted to bring to us today? Yes, sir. Name and address for the record. Uh, my name is Jeff Sabin. Uh, I work for the Center for Economic Development Law, 301 North Harvey. Uh, we represent the uh, applicant uh, for SPUD 1286, uh, we would like to request a one month continuance. 1286, that is. I mean, number 26 on the agenda. I believe Got it, yes. So, and a continuous request to what date? I'm sorry. Uh, uh, just a one month continuance. So, to the February 11th meeting? Yes. Excellent. Okay. Uh, just for the people that are with us, that's SPUD 1286. Is there anybody that had wanted to be heard on that item today? To what? So I believe though, the reason I asked, I believe those were the applicants if I'm not mistaken. I had phone calls with these guys, that's why I didn't, is there, yeah. So is there anybody else that, that wanted to be heard besides the applicants? Okay, hearing none, I'll entertain a continuous request on item 26, SPD 1286 until February the 11th, 2021. Please cast your votes when available. Motion and seconded. And the continuous request is approved. Thank you very much. Uh, next item on the agenda today is our consent item agenda. We have uh, 11 on today's consent agenda. These are items that essentially are administrative. There's no known protest. Uh, staff believes uh, they can be approved in a block. And with that, uh, Mr. Butler, if you would read them off for us. Yes, item number one, case number CE1045, application to close the north-south sewer easement in lots 37 through 39 of block 15 in the Wilmot Place addition, located at 235 Southeast 59th Street. Item two, case number CE1046, application to close 297 feet of the north-south utility easement at 4901 South Bryant Avenue. Item three, case P, uh, SP, 548 application for a special permit to operate a light industrial use a brewery in the dbd downtown design district located at 1 northeast 7th street item 4 case spud 1281 application to rezone 1216 and 1218 northwestern avenue from c4 to spud 1281 item 5 case spud 1282, application to rezone 1127 Northwest 56th Street from R1 to SPUD 1282. Item six, <clears throat> case uh, C7251, final plat of A7 Austin edition, and that is located north of Southwest 15th Street and west of South Council Road. Item seven, <clears throat> case uh, 7252, final plat of Springs at Skyline Trails, edition section two, and that's located east of Cemetery Road and north of Reno Avenue. Item eight, case C7253, final plat of the Pinnacle at Brookstone, phase three, located east of Mustang Road and south of Southwest 29th Street. Item nine, case C7256, final plat of Surrey Plaza, and that is located um, east of North Mustang Road and north of Northwest Expressway. Item 10, case C C7257, final plat of Summers Point, phase 12, being, uh, and that's located west of Cemetery Road and south of Reno Avenue. And finally, item 11, case C7258, final plat of Gentry Crossing, phase two, located north of Southwest 104th Street and west of South Rockwell Avenue. Okay, uh, is there anyone here that wanted to be heard on any of those items today that were just read? So seeing, nope, seeing nobody, uh, I'll take a motion on the consent docket as read. Excellent. Somebody second that on their screen whenever you can. I have a motion to second. Cast your votes when available. 
and those consent items have been approved unanimously. Next item on today's agenda uh, begins our items requiring separate vote. First item there is uh, item number 12, Mr. Butler. This case number PC10709, application to rezone 9802 East Wilshire Boulevard from R1 to AA. Mm -hmm. Do we have a staff introduction on this? Oh, okay. Uh, is the applicant present for item number 12? Somebody, anybody? This is PC10709, 9802 East Wilshire Boulevard. Applicant? Oh, that's going to be a major bummer. All right, we're going to push it to the end of today's docket in hopes that the applicant appears uh, staff, if the applicant for item 12 appears, let them know we've pushed this to the end of today's agenda. Next item up is item 13, Mr. Butler. SPUD 1279, application to rezone 1200 South Meridian Avenue from I-1 to SPUD 1279. Good afternoon, David Box, 522 Colcord Drive here on behalf of the applicant. Uh, this, this is an item that would allow for the, um, the site that's currently developed as a, a hotel motel to be redeveloped in a manner that would allow for multifamily. Uh, it's zoned I-1 now. Uh, if you're familiar with Meridian, there's a lot of industrial development that exists when you get at least a block off of Meridian. But as you drive up and down Meridian, it is predominantly restaurants, retail strip centers, and, and hotels. This, this particular hotel has been a big problem uh, for the city uh, and their police force for quite some time. Um, in, in speaking with uh, a member of the Oklahoma City Pol uh, Hotel Association, uh, they are very excited about the fact that this is going to be reconverted and, and repurposed. They did submit a letter of support that you should have in your packet. Uh, so this, this item does have one TE that we agree with, and we'd be happy to answer any questions. Thank you very much, Mr. Box. Uh, Commissioner Coffey, this is your, your ward, so I'll let you lead off our discussion. down Meridian here uh, has been in disrepair for a number of years uh, and uh, I think this is an improvement to the area and I support the application. Any questions for the applicant Commissioner Coffey at all? Okay is there anybody here that wants to be heard on this item? Seeing none I mean I'll just say I think you know something we should be thinking about we had a very lengthy discussion uh, at our last meeting in regard to a uh, residentially zoned district that was going to abut industrial. Uh, that's exactly what we have here. This is a residentially rezoned district uh, that we're going to stick right next to a bunch of I-2. Um, I'm a little concerned about compatibility, but I'm in complete agreement with the applicant knowing the area pretty well that uh, this, this is in need of some help. Um, but I am a little concerned uh, just because once it's residentially zoned, there's nothing here we can do to create some sort of buffer from the compatibility problem. So I'll just give my commissioners a second to see if they're concerned about that, if there's something we should do, or if we're just uh, convinced this will be such a great deal for the area, we're not as worried about it. I spent a lot of time talking about it last time. So um, any comments or concerns from commissioners? Or if not, I'll take a motion on the item from Commissioner Coffey. Scott, I don't... What industrial there that is... <clears throat> I don't remember a whole lot of really high impact industrial well, in it, that area. Well, it, it, so that area is the Southwest Industrial Corridor. Uh, it is the most heavily industrialized portion of Oklahoma City. Uh, uh, yeah, I know that. I mean, just in the immediate area, kind of. Understand, my concern would be because it is zoned that way, you could come along behind it and you could bulldoze what is right now some 45 year old garden office buildings and you could build whatever I-2 would allow, and now we have a residentially zoned district that shares a boundary unaltered by a industrial user uh, that, again, would be entitled to outdoor storage and a litany of what would typically be pretty noxious uses. Um, as I told you know, Mr. Box, my only concern about this applicant in general is I don't want to start the process of introducing residentially zoned property. This is a first for the area. And then all of a sudden, we have industrial users who are being impacted in an area that's been industrialized for 45 years because now there are apartments and there once wasn't, right? So 
how do we address that? Uh, and are there things we need to be thinking about? It, I just wanted to bring it to your attention. I, I, I'm, I am a believer, having talked to the person who submitted the letter for the hotel association, uh, that essentially you have an apartment complex now, right? I mean, that's basically what you have now. But I, that doesn't tell me that we don't need to be thinking through compatibility issues when we do zoning like this, because it could change quickly. So, so I would note, though, if you, if you look at the industrial that exists to the, to the east, you know, it is uh, low in scale, it, 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 almost like little office complex. To your point that, yeah, somebody could gobble all this up, demolish that, and come back with a larger scale industrial, you're a bit limited in the narrowness of that site. You've got Sovereign Row right there that's a public street. So really what you're talking about is a scenario where it all gets demolished, the city takes the, the action to close, then vacate, and all that public right-of-way somehow goes away. It, it seems far-fetched, with all due respect, and so I do think that this provides a better scenario than, than the current uh, situation. I, I agree that it does, but what I don't like is when we have a two-hour conversation on one case, you get presented the exact same facts on another case, and it seems like it's no big deal. I think it's fair that we look at them as if they were all the same in the sense that if there's compatibility issues identified in the comp plan and in the city between I-2 and residentially zoned districts, that we have the discussion. Sure. I made the point. I I'm done. But I think if we're ready to make a motion, let's do it. But just be mindful of that as we look at some of these other cases. So. Well, unfortunately, what this particular hotel and three or four others in the era have become is just kind of a hangout for the homeless people. And it uh, is really terribly deteriorated. Uh, I, I understand the point you're making, certainly. Um, but I see this as a definite improvement to the area. And even if some of the other hotels that are in this state of disrepair go this direction, I think it's an improvement to the area. Yep. I, I agree that it's an improvement. There's no doubt. So that sounds like a motion to me, Commissioner Coffey. Is that a motion? Well, if there are no other uh, comments, I would move that uh, we recommend approval of SPUD 1279. I have a motion. Do I have a second? I'll second. I can. Switch your, uh, hit your computer button. Go on. We need like a buffering thing that shows up on the screen out there so <laughs> the public knows that the Planning Commission is just buffering right All now. All right, click the plane. There you go. There we go. I have a motion to second. Please cast your votes when available. And that application is approved unanimously. Thank you. Next item on the agenda today is item 14, I believe, Mr. Butler. 14 is case SPUD 1288, application to rezone 9800 and 9808 from SPUD 786 to SPUD 1288. Is the applicant present with us today? Simple Storage LLC. Interesting. Okay. Well, we'll move this one to the end of the docket as well. Item 14, we'll just push this to the back. That's not you, is it? You're 15. Okay. Uh, we'll push item 14 to the end of today's agenda after item 12. We'll recall it. Next item is item 15. 15 is case C7259, preliminary plat of Echo Park, located north of Northwest 150th Street and east of North MacArthur Boulevard. Uh, once again, David Box, 522 Colcord Drive, here on behalf of the applicant, Dean Kalita, the civil engineer for the project, is also here with us. This is a preliminary plat on approximately 61 acres. It does conform to the zoning ordinance as well as the subdivision regulations. Uh, there are six TEs, all of which we agree to. Now, I'd be happy to answer any questions. Uh, this is in my ward. Um, I I'll just note for the purposes of the record, I do, I do have someone signed up to speak, so don't panic, but um, that the design of the preliminary plot conforms to the subdivision regulations as they relate to access requirements for divisions greater than 200 lots, uh, and it also complies with the requirements of the R1 base zoning district. Uh, applicants in agreement with all the TEs, I, I don't have any issues here. I do have someone who is signed up, so I'd certainly love to hear uh, their feedback. Uh, I believe it's Lucas McGuire. Are you here with us? 
please come forward, Mr. McGuire, and when you get up to the prices, right, you can start by giving us your name and address, okay? Hello, uh, Lucas McGuire, 5604 Northwest 163rd Terrace, which is just a little bit north of, of the uh, development in question. Got it. I am the president of Still Meadows Neighborhood, which is uh, on the northern uh, contiguous lands to this Echo Park. And unfortunately, I'm not super experienced in this, so I primarily just wanted to voice a concern, which is uh, a through street. It looks like uh, heading north into Still Meadows neighborhood. And I would like to just oppose that and explain why. Uh, pretty simply, uh, that, that neighborhood or that street goes right into our neighborhood park, the only neighborhood park we have. And we've already had quite a bit of issues at that intersection and had the city install some yield signs and we're considering even stop signs. But anyway, I just would like to ask that we don't direct more traffic for any reason into that area. Our neighborhood has experienced a, a ton of growth. We only have uh, one, that, that street goes straight west to MacArthur and that's our, our, our bo main boardwalk and it's pretty busy already. Right. Um, Mr. Ogar, let me ask you this. It, your neighborhood, are they public streets? I'm sorry? Are your neighborhoods public streets? Yes, sir. They're not private streets? Correct. Yeah. So um, when I first came on the Planning Commission four years ago, uh, I argued with, I don't want to point fingers, so I'm not at the guy next to me. Um, I argued with people like him about the importance of connectivity. Um, I was wrong. Uh, I think that the reason that we have this policy in place is because we want to promote the connectivity between neighborhoods. It does a number of things that the Planning Commission fully supports. Uh, and those include uh, alleviating traffic from uh, right of ways, giving fire, police services, more routes to access issues and emergencies and things of that nature. Um, I understand we get this comment a lot. So I am not, uh, it's not that I'm not empathetic to your concern about the connectivity or that we don't hear it regularly, we do. It's that it here our job is to balance the equities between something like allowing the connectivity and preventing it. And there are instances, particularly when the streets aren't public, so the city didn't help, you know, is not responsible for maintaining them where we entertain that or in the instance where we have commercial tracks that are but residential and we want to limit connectivity between a commercial user and a residential user. But in instances like this, I, I have to support the connectivity and insist that it be included. If they would have come in and requested not to have the connectivity, we would have insisted that they that they add it. Okay. So, so there's not a special exception being that the park is two blocks. I mean, it's it's directly north of that. Yeah, okay. I, I understand. And again, it's please don't take it as insensitivity or that I'm not listening to you. It's just that when I balance the, the park being there against the need for connectivity for all the reasons I just outlined, I balance that in favor of of requiring that connectivity. So it's unique to the neighborhood. I hear you. I, I was I was on your, your side until I sort of studied it and really got familiar with it. But this connectivity is really, really important. And we have cases all the time where people come in and this connectivity hasn't been allowed and it creates major problems for the city down the road. So okay. um, I do appreciate you being here and coming down today and sharing your concern with us. All right, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. McGuire. Any other con uh, comments or concerns from commissioners on this one? If not, that's the only person I had signed up to speak. Is there anyone else? Okay, hearing none, I can't make a motion or I'd make a motion to approve. So if somebody could do that, I'd be much appreciative. I'll make a motion to approve item C-7259. I have a motion and I'm assuming I'll get a second. I do have a second. Please cast your votes when available. And that application is approved unanimously. Uh, next item on the agenda is uh, item 16, I believe. Item 16 is case number C-7260, preliminary plat of Lone Oak Valley located south of Northwest 164th Street and west of North Portland Avenue. How's it going? Dean Colita, Civil and Environmental Consultants, 4045 Northwest 64th Street, representing the applicant. And uh, we have looked at all the TEs and we agreed to all of them except for number three. And I just want to clarify, uh, the request was to loan, to uh, basically align our north driveway with the subdivision across the street and or it said to abide by the subdivision regulations. We aren't able to line those streets up because of floodplain that's to the west. So we moved our entrance as far east as we could to get out of the floodplain.
but we, stu we still do meet the subdivision regulations of 150 foot from center to center separation. So it was a do this or this. So we don't agree to align it, but we do agree to meet the subdivision regulations. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Kalita. Just, I don't recall, did you, uh, you, you had sent me an email yes, sir. showing me the floodplain and outlining that. And I've that. got that image here. If you did you include other commissioners sure. on that? I did not. You want well, me to pass it out? It's okay. Just briefly, he submitted a, an exhibit to me that just showed uh, the floodplain issue and the basis for why they offset them on purpose, um, basically because the floodplain prevents them from lining them up. What I told Ms. Glita was I thought that made perfect sense to me. Uh, it was just a question for us as to whether or not what was the lesser of evils uh, uh, locating an access immediately across so they line up, but putting it in a floodplain, right, where you could have potential roadway issues and other things, or uh, allowing him to offset them. I do not have, I mean, if it weren't for that obstruction, of course, we always, you know, push for them to align them. But in this instance, I think it makes perfect sense. You may explain the signalized intersection component of that too, that you Absolutely. explained to me on the phone. So on the, uh, the road just to the east there where the access is to the frontage road for uh, Highway 74 North Portland Avenue, that is a, a signalized intersection. And you know, that'll help give refuge for anyone who's gonna be turning in and out of these neighborhoods. So that's gonna help with the traffic flow. And you know, everything to the west is floodplain, so there won't be any development until you get across the creek and then there's a, a low note north that's gonna be there, but that's a subdivision that's you know, a quarter mile down the street. So, and the rest of everything is floodplain there to the west. So it would be, this would probably be the last entrance that's between the creek and the highway there. Yeah, so in this instance, you would need the, he would need the variance uh, in order to, to accomplish what you're seeking to, which is uh, part of TE3, correct? Yes, and the way it was stated, it said you could either line it up or abide by the subdivision regulations, and we're going to take the or, so we, we will be able to meet the subdivision regs. But okay. I'm not sure how that T's written, if that just needs to be struck in from there and just have the or. Well, I, I think if you're comfortable that you're going to meet TE3, we can just, we can just leave it in there if, yeah. if it's I mean, either we'll, or. We'll meet the subdivision regs. So. Okay, so we're just good with the application. Okay, yeah, and I just want to clarify that. Does that, Commissioner Clare, you're kind of our, hate to put you on the spot, but you're sort of our traffic guy. Does that make sense to you? Do you have concerns on that? It does. No, I, I don't have any concerns. You know, ideal, ideal world, you, you line things up, um, but uh, I can definitely see there's circumstances here that prevent that, so. Okay. Uh, deal. Yeah, I don't yeah. have anybody that's signed up to speak on this item. Is there anybody who wanted to be heard on this item today? Again, this is uh, C7260, item number 16 on today's agenda. Hearing and seeing no one, unless there's other discussion, uh, I'll take a motion uh, on the item. I, I, I will just again point out for the record as I try to that staff indicates that the design conforms with the PD requirements of 706 and per the applicant's agreement to uh, the TEs, the design of the preliminary plot does conform to the subdivision regulations. And we need, a, we need to take the variance first, right? We don't actually need the variance because oh, he's okay. in agreement with the TE because of the or language, so he's good. We okay. just needed a motion on the item. All right, well, I'll motion to approve item C7260. I have a motion and certainly an electronic second, which I just got. Please cast your votes when available. And that application is approved unanimously. Thank you very much, Mr. Kalita. Uh, item 17. 17 is case number C7261, a preliminary plat of Arcady Heights, located south of East I-44 and east of North Midwest Boulevard. Good afternoon, David Box, 522 Colcord Drive. Here on behalf of the applicant, Mr. Joel Bryant, who is here, and Mr. Mark Grubbs, who is a civil engineer. So this is an item that you, you probably uh, think looks familiar. There was a, a zoning case that we had uh, a few months ago where we were trying to get this zoned RA. Uh, there was considerable protest, and what we discovered through the protest was uh, most of the folks that were protesting lived to the west of this. And to the west of this had similar lot sizes, and in most cases were actually smaller than what our lots uh, were going to be and now are pursuant to this plat. Predominantly, one particular neighborhood had uh, concern as it related to water. And you may recall that what we discovered was that neighborhood happened to lie on a fault line and their low water pressure was uh, based upon that and not based upon uh, the ability of wells in this area to produce. There is ample water in the area, as we explained during the rezoning process. Notably, during the rezoning process, both here at Planning Commission uh, through Commissioner uh, Pennington and then at City Council through Councilwoman Nice, we were admonished to uh, make sure that when we came back 
the lots along the southern border of this needed to be at least two acres in size, even though the RA zoning would allow us to go down to uh, one acre. We uh, expressed that that was our um, desire, and that's what you'd see in a plat. And so now we're here today, and what you'll see is all of those lots along the south are at least two acres in size, and one of them is actually uh, 2.74 acres. So we believe we've done what we said we were going to do. Uh, there are a handful of TEs. We do agree with all of them, but I do want to note as it relates to TE3, um, we agree to the TE as to the easement being provided. Uh, the subregs do allow uh, for the street stub or a street easement, so we are going to take the option of providing the street easement, so we don't need a variance, uh, but I did just want to note that for the record. So I'd be happy to answer any questions, and we'd ask for your approval. Uh, is it fair to, I mean, so you are in agreement in addition with TE2, is that correct? I'm sorry? You're in agreement with TE2, is that correct? Yes. Okay. Uh, I, just for the commission's benefit and Commissioner Pennington's absence, I'm certainly not going to speak for him in detail. I will say I did speak to him about this item. Uh, he did not express any concerns to me generally about the item. Uh, I will also note for the purposes of the record here, uh, the design of preliminary plot conforms with the subdivision regulations as they relate to access requirements, and it, it does conform uh, with the requirements of the underlying RA zoning district. So. Uh, I do have one person who signed up to speak before I call upon them. I'll just ask if there's any questions of commissioners of the applicant. See none. Uh, so, uh, yes, I'm going to, yeah, I, I just, if there's no commissioner questions, I, forgive me, for, I can't read your Valerie Gulick, I live at 13115 North Midwest Boulevard, which is directly east of the proposed property. Thank you very much. And I have some concerns because the application says 66 lots. All these pictures show 73. And in fact, the staff report indicates there's 66 lots. So I'd like to see the plat match what the application's for. Yeah, the, the great news is whatever's in the application is actually what's important. It's I'm also kind of confused because the applicant for the rezoning was J. Bet Bentley Homes, and this applicant is Bentwood Investments. I can't find anything on Bentwood Investments to even contact them to see what their plan is or why there's a difference or anything. This guy's just hard to find. Well, it, his, his representative is here. I'm, I'm, I'm absolutely certain that his, his representative will provide you contact information. I'm you... sorry, I wear hearing aids and I can hardly hear you. I know, I'm sorry too. Yeah. Um, the applicant's representative is here. Yes, I saw Mr. Box. Yes, and I can assure you that he can get you in contact with Mr. Bentley and himself if you have additional questions that you need answers to. Um, so, we don't necessarily, yeah. you know. Yeah. I, I just want to be sure that somebody doesn't come in, take out all the trees, and then just abandon it. I understand. I, I do understand your concern. Um, they, they, they are in conformance to what's before us. They're in conformance with the subdivision regulations. We know that. Those are the things that we look at for ordinances that guide that the applicant is going to do what the city requires. And those, we're told in the staff report that those are met. So, and then again, what you see in an image, we, we caution folks from the public all the time, never look at an image. What really matters is what's in the document itself. So if it says 66 lots, that's what they can have. Okay. If they show a, a visual with 73 or 121, it makes no difference. What's in the document is what matters. Okay, so you're saying that it doesn't matter what the picture shows, if they apply for 66, that's all they get? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Have a wonderful day. Thank you, too. Any other questions or anyone who wants to be heard on this item? Seeing none, if there's no further discussion, uh, I'd take a motion on this item. Oh, I'm so sorry. So, I, Mr. Chair, um, the 66 is an error. It, it is 73. So is that in the report, though? Is that in the staff report? The staff report says 66. I can tell you the plat submitted is 73. That's what I meant. Yeah, the 73 lots still conform to all subregs. Right. So again, what's, it, what's in the written plat document is what's important. What you're getting on the screen is an exhibit that's provided by the staff report. So Correct. That's, that's, the, that's the distinction I'm trying to make for the public is what's memorialized uh, by the submitted plat and is what is reviewed by staff and has been determined to be in conformance with the subdivision regulations. This is a, an exhibit presented by staff. It is not the plot itself. I hope that's clear, and if it's not, I'll blame the mask. What is the application? It says 66 lots. Uh, the application that, and this that is staff the application produced? that they permit, that they sent in. 
So the applicant has confirmed that what the plat re provides is for 73 lots. Right. That is what the applicant just confirmed so, for the record. Even, so it's just a, a typographical error and, and that's all that matters. Ye yes, ma'am, just because in the event that it did make a difference in the way that the subdivision regulations were applied, that would be what would be critical to us. I don't like 66. I don't know, excuse me, I don't like 73, I prefer 66, but. Understood. So, so if you look at the, um, the document that says preliminary plot of uh, Arcady Heights, it does say number of lots, 73. Can you provide sure. her a copy of that, please, just so she has one? Okay. Okay. You're welcome. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Uh, any other questions of the applicant or concerns on this? If not, I'll take a motion. All motion to approve item C, 7261. I have a motion and a second, just buffering. We'll take that second by Commissioner Hinkle. They all work the same. Please cast your votes when available. And that application is approved unanimously. Thank you. Next item on today's agenda, I believe, is item 18. Item 18 is case C7255, preliminary plat of Rose Rock, phase two. Uh, and that is also, that's located south of Northeast 50th Street and west of I-35 Service Road. We also have a variance to section 5.2.8.B and table 5.1 in section 5.3.2.A of the subdivision regulations. Uh, once again, David Box, 522 Colcord Drive, here on behalf of the applicant, Kendall Dillon, who's a civil engineer, also here with us. This is a, a bit of a unique situation in that it's, it's really a replat. Uh, this entire neighborhood was, was platted some years ago, uh, only portions of it developed. And therefore, the portion that we seek a plat on today uh, expired uh, pursuant to the, the subdivision regulation. So we're seeking to replat uh, that part. This uh, totals 12 lots, and there are two variances. Uh, these are the same two variances that were originally granted to the developer when he originally platted this lot or the, this entire development. And that is the number of lots on a, a single entrance. Um, it, it is worth noting, Cindy, if you could go back to. The, the aerial, the, that was perfect. If you look at this, um, although it's one neighborhood and, and again, the one access point, it really operates as, as if it were two separate neighborhoods. You have the leg that goes up to the north and then you have the two cul-de-sacs that come off as you go uh, to the east. So the other thing that's a bit unique is when you, when you look at this, there are some very large homes that have been built here, uh, some of which span over more than one lot. And so although there are more than 30 lots, uh, we're not going to have more than 30 homes, or excuse me, there, there will be less homes than the number of lots. The total number of lots is 43 with these 12. Um, so this was the variance that was granted originally. We're asking for the same thing so that this development can be uh, finished out. And then the second one is uh, the length of the cul-de-sac. Uh, the way that the property exists and the layout and the golf course to the, to the south and I-35 to the east, there's really no way to loop back on itself or provide another point of access. So we do need that variance as well. Uh, we'd be happy to answer any questions. Uh, again, in Commissioner Pennington's absence, I'll just say the design of this preliminary plat conforms with the requirements of PUD 1008, um, with the exception of the two uh, variances we discussed. Um, just for the purpose of the record, Mr. Box, when was this application preliminary plat first? I don't see it in the, in the packet, and I could just be overlooking it at the moment, but I don't remember reading it either. Do you know? 05. 2005? Yes. Okay. That's great. Any questions for the applicant on this one? Anybody? Uh, I don't have anybody signed up to speak. Is there anybody that wants to be heard on C7255? Seeing none, I'll, I'll just, uh, my only question on the cul-de-sac, uh, Mr. Box, there's a, I mean, it comes to a cul-de-sac and then it kind of extends further. Is that the reason you need the variance? Is that additional extension? Uh, no, I, I think... I don't think it's just the additional extension. I think our cul-de-sac length is like 823 feet. Yeah, even if it stopped at the yes, first cul-de-sac. Correct. Yeah, okay, that makes sense to me. Um, I, I don't have any objections. Um, I don't know if anybody feels differently, but there's no discussion or concern on this one. I'll take a motion when somebody wants to make it. 
I'll make a motion on the variance to section 5.3.2.A to approve that variance. And that would be the table 5.1 Ta of that section, Commissioner Clare? Correct. Subdivision regulations linked to the cul de sac. I have a motion on uh, the variance uh, written in TE number three. I have a motion and a second. Please cast your votes on that variance when available. And that variance is approved with six votes of the six sitting commissioners. Uh, the other variance is section 5.28B. Do I have a motion on that? A motion to approve variance to section 5.2.8.B on number of lots allowed. I have a motion and a second. There it is. Please cast your votes when available. And that variance passes as well with six votes. I just need a motion on the item. And I will motion to approve item C7255. I have a motion. Do I have a second? Please cast your votes when available. And that item is approved unanimously. Here's hoping it gets built. It's more lots for more uh, school district money, Mr. Boss. Next item is item 19. Item 19 is case number PUD 1804, application to rezone 5401 West Memorial Road from PUD 1446 to PUD 1804. Uh, good afternoon. My name is Adam Henriksen with Crunk Engineering, uh, 7112 Crossroads Boulevard, uh, here on behalf of the applicant Kindred Healthcare and purposes to, uh, for a parking lot addition for the existing Mercy Rehabilitation Hospital located at 5401 West Memorial Road. Uh, happy to answer any questions. Is the parking extension related to the expansion that's currently taking place on the east side? It's separate. It's uh, intended to help supplement. Uh, there's an existing demand right now, so it's intended to help that as well. Got it. There was only one thing I had in this one. This is in, in, uh, in, in my ward. Um, was the, can somebody tell me what a ground hugging sign is? It says a detached ground hugging sign in this PUD. There shall be one, one of those. What, what is that? I don't know what that is. Is that the sign that's there now that I drive by every day on the way home? Uh, I'm not sure what you're... I'm not, not sure either. Sure. Do you know? Yeah. I mean, <laughs> so we've got language in a PUD. We don't know what it is. We might want to change that. Um, this is under freestanding accessory signs, and it says there shall be one detached ground hugging sign in this PUD. This, uh, so the PUD was pretty much written to match the existing PUD, except change the description of the property to allow for. Got it. So um, it is your sign that's there now. You're not purporting to add an additional sign. Correct. Is that correct? Is correct. that there's no additional sign at all. Absolute no. agreement there. And that's consistent with the with the PUD. We would have called it a monument sign, but okay. Yeah. If so, henceforth, ground hugging signs shall be known as monument signs. There it is. Okay. Um, if there's no further discussion on this one and there's nobody that wants to be heard on the item, I don't, I don't have any additional questions. It's very straightforward. So, uh, commissioners, any questions of the applicant? If not, I'll take a motion on it. I'll motion to approve PUD 1804. I have a motion and I, I did get a second verbally. We'll see which one lands electronically. Oh, okay. Now I have a second. Cast your votes when available. And that application is approved unanimously. Good luck to you, sir. Next item on the agenda is item number 20. 20 is case number SPUD 1275, application to rezone 13600 Southwestern Avenue from SPUD 268 to SPUD 1275. Hi, my name is Faye Cardell. I live at 2436 Southwest 149th Street, Oklahoma City. Ms. Cardell, if you could, if you could pull that mic just a little bit. There you go. Okay. See if that helps you a little bit. Can you hear me now? I can. Okay. <laughs> Welcome. Okay, it's kind of a conceptual request. 
I think I'm pretty much in compliance with all the surrounding uses and spuds in the area. And I basically am just getting it for a possible sale. <laughs> so that's basically where it's at. Got it. Well, I certainly appreciate you reaching out to me in advance, and I know you spoke to Commissioner Hinkle as well. Uh, Commissioner Hinkle, this is your word, so I'll let you lead our discussion. Yeah. Um, I do not have anybody signed up to speak on item number 20. No. Uh, before you do that, I did, when I talked to uh, Ms. Cradle, I asked if she would be in agreement to alter the drive-in use unit to be 150 feet from residential, uh, which she agreed to. Uh, you remember us talking about that? Yes. Okay, and then the other thing we talked about that I was real curious about as a, just a staff question so I understand better is why laundry service was requested in the TE to be included in that 150-foot uh, TE. Is it, do, do we, why, why would laundry services need to be 150 feet from residential, just so I understand? I'm looking at Jeff. Jeff's looking at Jared. Jared's looking in the hallway. Seems like it'd be a good smell to have you know, some bounty. Wait, is that the issue? You. Is there really a smell? I mean, I don't. I don't know. I don't have a laundry. I'm sorry. What was the, I can't really hear right there. What was the question? What, why is why is the TE number three in the uh, the applicant's staff report include laundry services being 150 feet from residential? What is the compatibility issue with laundry services? Uh, let me let me confer with JJ real quick because I'm not exactly. It doesn't sure. sound like there's that big of an issue, or or we would know the answer like right away. So I'm going to assume it's not that big of an issue. Is that a concern to you, Ms. Cradle? Yes, sir. Okay, excellent. So if that's true, then uh, Mr. Inkle, I'm ready for your motion. Uh, This is Mike on. Yes. He moved approval on the item. That, I, don't, I don't know why. It's way down there. That motion was seconded. And we're going to cast our votes when we're ready to do it. And that application is approved unanimously. Good luck. Item 21. Okay, my name is Faith 20. Bartle. 2436 Southwest 149th Street. Welcome back. Kansas City. 21 is uh, case <laughs> yeah. number SPD 1276, application to rezone 820 Southwest 134th Street from AA and C3 to SPD 1276. Out of an abundance of caution, I'll ask if there's anyone here that wants to be heard on this item today. And seeing none, I'll take a motion, Commissioner Hinkle. This time we can hear you. So moved. There it is. <clears throat> motion in a second. It won't work me. Yeah. There we go. There go. Please cast your votes when available. And that application is approved unanimously. Thank you very much. Item 22. Item 22 is SPUD 1265, application by A&E Properties to rezone 1137, 1139, 1143, 1145 North Meridian Avenue from 02 to SPUD 1265. Is the applicant with us? A&E Properties LLC? Okay. Uh, well, we'll move this one. That's strike three, so the next item, we just, we just continue is what happens. There's three that we move to the back of the dock, and then that's it. So that's a, uh, item 23. 23 is case number SPUD 1283, application to rezone 2800 Northwest Grand Boulevard from PUD 478 to SPUD 1283. Uh, David Box 522 Colcord Drive here on behalf of the applicant. This is uh, an SPUD to take what is a, a current building that falls within PUD 478 and to rezone it to allow uh, some additional uses. For whatever reason, PUD 478 took this particular tract within that and limited it to a, a single use, administrative and professional offices, and then sought to further limit it to just one sub-use within that, and that being a bank. Uh, the bank is, is no longer operational there, is my understanding, and uh, 
the desire is to get it rezoned to allow for uh, additional uses other than uh, just a single bank. So what we've done is, is create an SPUD that we believe to be compatible uh, given the, the nature of the area uh, and in addition given the existing zoning. Cindy, if you could show uh, the, the zoning map. I, I was handed uh, a letter uh, before the meeting of some 43 people that have um, signed up in, in, in protest um, and, and I have had a conversation with uh, an individual that owns some of the properties around there. The, the concern being uh, medical marijuana. So um, just for purpose of the record, uh, you know, we have no intent to, to utilize this site um, for medical marijuana. Uh, but the, the individuals, at least some of them that, that are here uh, to protest, it's worth noting they own the, the sites that you see to the east and to the south that are zoned straight C3 with no limitations whatsoever. So our SPUD that has, to, at my count, nine uses, uh, in my opinion, would certainly be less intrusive than the straight C3 that allows at least 67 uses, uh, not including the conditional uses uh, that could also be done. And so with that, I think that this is an appropriate zoning given the nature of the area. Um, there was a request by Commissioner Powers that we limit the height to three stories. We are happy to do that. So that would require us to add a TE number four, which we're fine with, to limit the height to four stories. There are three TEs. We do agree with TE1 and 3. We agree to TE2, but we'd like to modify it. Um, traffic in that area is a little troubling because of the way that Grand interacts with May. And you cannot, coming uh, from the north southbound on May, take that left turn and go east on, on Grand. You must go down to Country Club or uh, yeah, Country Club, or presumably you can go through, through Pembroke. So what we'd ask that TE2 be modified to uh, add access onto Grand in the event that all spacing and site distance requirements are met. Um, I did talk to JJ, and JJ was comfortable with that. Right now, all of the access is internal uh, to, to Berkeley and Country Club. Country Club actually isn't even within the confines of the SPUD. And so in the event that it's redeveloped, in other words, that building is demolished and a new development is, is there, we'd like the ability to have one on Grand, one on Berkeley, so eliminate one, and one on Country Club, again, assuming that Grand meets all site distance and spacing requirements. So with that, I'd be happy to answer any questions. I do understand that there are some folks here to speak, so I'd at least like the opportunity to come back. Uh, Understood. A couple of quick questions on this one. Uh, number one, Commissioner Powers, I spoke to her about this application. She referenced that the agreement was to limit the height to three stories, not three four. Stories. Okay, you said, I thought you said four. So the, the TE4 uh, would be limited to three stories. TE4 limited to three. Building height limited to three, got it. Second thing is on TE2, just to make sure we understand the language you're requesting, access shall be from existing driveways. If the site is redeveloped, access will be from a maximum of one driveway on Berkeley Country Club and Grand. And Grand. And Grand. And Grand shall be required to meet all site distance and separation requirements. So and Grand so long as? Site distance and separation requirements are met. Got it. Okay. Any questions for the applicant from commissioners? Seeing none, uh, first person I have signed up to speak is uh, David Hooten. Mr. Hooten? Start by giving us your name and address for the record. Yes, David Hooten, 1600 Coventry Park, Nichols Hills, Oklahoma. I'm here representing 43 of the property owners in that we were trying to be COVID compliant and not have a bunch of people down here. So I'm uh, as a private citizen. Their concerns are that there's already uh, traffic issues in that area. Anyone who has been to Starbucks knows that that can have it wrapped around the entire property that you're talking about. And the uh, possibilities of grass and egress from the commons will be a, a problem if this is granted. Also, it's an oversaturation of businesses in such a small area. Um, so we would request that you don't uh, allow this. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Before you leave, Mr. Hooten, any questions from Mr. Hooten on this item from anybody? No? Thank you very much. Appreciate you coming down. Next person I have signed up is Tim Austin. Mr. Austin, are you here? Start by giving us your name and address, please. My name is Tim Austin, and my address is 825 North Broadway, Suite 300 in Oklahoma City. Welcome. I, uh, I'm here on behalf of the property owner uh, that is adjacent to the uh, subject property. Uh, it's our understanding that that bank uh, has a restriction on that property now that it can only be a bank. And in return, I don't know if this was a part of the PUD 478, 
it restricts our properties from being uh, having a bank. And so I guess my uh, question would be, or at least our, our concern would be to research this to see what will happen to us if you make a change in zoning. Um, we're, we're not sure that, like, again, that the bank, you know, was restricted uh, to be just a bank, and then it also affected our property with a restriction that said we cannot have a bank in our uh, property. So I guess I'm more or less asking for a little time to research what those restrictions are, if it's a covenant or uh, something else that uh, needs to be addressed. Th those restrictions wouldn't be something that would be within our purview anyway. Um, we're not going to ferret out obligations between restrictions on private you know, property owners that are deed restrictions or other private agreements. That wouldn't be something we could consider. Does that make sense? Right. Yeah. I mean, the zoning, whatever is restricted by the zoning, this is going to change that for sure, uh, just as any zoning application would. So the limitation on this only being a bank goes away. Does that answer your question? Yes, it does. Okay. Thank you very much. Appreciate you coming down. You bet. Those are the only two people I had signed up to speak. Is there anybody else that wants to be heard on this item? Commissioners, any comments? I, I, I'll say again, I, I did speak to Commissioner Powers on it, uh, just to make sure she didn't have any other concerns or had heard from other neighbors, maybe things we hadn't heard. Uh, she had not. Uh, she was comfortable with the application so long as the building height was limited to three stories. That was the only feedback I got from her. So. Yeah, I've got, a, I've got a question. For Mr. Ostrin, his point, um, I get what you said about we wouldn't get involved in their own private restrictions, but until they have that figured out, he doesn't know whether or not his client is against making a change to where it's no longer what is in our purview limited to just a bank. I think he just asked for more time to look into that. I'm not sure how much time they've had, what kind of notice they've had, but I get his point to where they don't know if they are against removing the limitation to a bank unless and until they figure out their own private interest. So, I mean, I'd say we're, the, a bank would still be allowed. It just wouldn't be the only use allowed. You might uh, step a little, just, uh, yeah, we weren't picking you up all the way, so. Oh, right. so uh, right now it's the only use allowed. We're not saying a bank couldn't be here. It's just now you could have something other than a bank. I have no idea what the restriction is that, that they're talking about. Uh, I mean, notice was sent 20 days before the hearing. I got a call uh, today uh, with that request. We can certainly go and, and try to figure that out in the six weeks that um, follow the, this meeting. I think the question before the commission is whether or not the uses submitted through the SPUD are appropriate given the context of the area and given the comprehensive plan. And if you see, you've got straight C3 to our east, right? So we're not introducing commercial development further east than already exists. Um, the, the person complaining of this actually owns something that is far more intense to the east. Have no idea if there's a restrictive covenant. Um, uh, understood, but it's somebody before us, Planning Commission, City Council, someone restricted it to only a bank, right? The subject site. Correct. So we're being asked to loosen that back up to more than that. Um, if it's no longer going to be a bank, how does that affect whoever might have been involved at the time from both the city and the public and the nearby neighbors when it was restricted to just a bank? Sure. No, fair point. Um, notice went out. Um, there's nobody here that, that I think has said that it should just be a bank. I have no idea. That P PUD 478 is an old PUD. Uh, why it would have been uh, designated like that, I have no idea. Um, as you know, you know, agreements are reached all the time on these. Uh, presumably, if somebody was involved that still cared about that agreement that was reached, they'd be here saying why it happened and that they still want it to happen. I have not heard that. Commissioners, other thoughts on this one? I mean, to me, to me, this is very straightforward. The height issue was a concern because there's not a three, there's not a three or four story or five story building in the area. Uh, if the applicants had agreement to the three height limitation uh, and the language on the drives, uh, the language provided, I, I, I have no objection. Is there anybody else that has concerns on it? Sorry, Mr. Chair, let me ask one more question. Is this just a recommendation of the city council or is this a final approval? I know I should No, this, it's just a rezoning. So this is just, we're making a recommendation to city council on the rezoning. Got it. So if gentlemen that feel like they need more time, they do have a little bit more time at least until it goes to city council. You got it. They'd have six okay. weeks from today. And I asked him to, you know, if, if he's got it, send it to me. The, you know, the issue is um, my client that's going to acquire the site 
if they aren't a party to that restrictive covenant, they can't agree to release it anyways, right? Unless there's certain language that it transfers. So we've got to figure out one, does it exist? Two, who are the parties to it to even be able to go release it? But at, some, if, but at some point in time, they agreed to restrict it down to just a bank, or when they bought it, they could have been aware that it was restricted to just a bank. So if. Well, I mean, that site was restricted to just a bank. But yes, the balance of it is straight C3. It could be a, a bank, a weed shop, a. You know, whatever you whatever you'd want under C three. If there's no other discussion, I'll, I mean, I'll, to, somebody wants to try a motion here. We don't have anybody else signed up to speak, so it's it's motion time. If somebody wants to make, I'll I'll, I'll make a motion. Um, I'll make a motion to approve SPUD twelve eighty three with the following TE amendments, adding TE four to limit the building to three stories, and amending TE two to add the language maximum of one driveway access onto Grand Boulevard provided all drive spacing and site distance requirements are met if redeveloped. I have a motion, do I have a second? I do have a second. Please cast your votes when available. Uh, and that application is approved. Thank you. Next item on the agenda is item 24. Yep. Item 24 is SPUD 1284, application to rezone 500 Southwest 104th Street from AA to SPUD. Once again, David Box, 522 Colcord Drive, here on behalf of the applicant. Uh, this is an SPD to uh, allow the, the Rest Haven Cemetery to add uh, the use to be able to uh, perform cremation on site. Um, the way that the, the code works is a bit odd uh, to get uh, a crematorium. It requires a base zoning district of C3, and then within C3, you'd have to get a special permit. Um, it didn't make sense. got around that by doing SPUD and, and by agreeing to the conditions uh, in the SPUD we would allow for the crematorium. Uh, there is one TE asking that we comply with the specific use standards for interment services, which we do agree to. Um, I'd be happy to answer any questions. I'm not sure of any um, protests that's come in. It seems like a natural expansion uh, of the use that's been there for quite some time. Uh, thank you. Commissioner Engel, this is in your ward, so I'll let you lead us off. I can't think of any place better to put a crematorium than right in the middle of a cemetery. So, what's that? I said I can't think of any place better to put a crematorium oh. than right in the middle of a cemetery. So, seems to fit. If nobody else has anything, I'm ready to make a motion. I do not have anybody signed up to speak. Commissioners, that seems hard to argue with, doesn't it? Seems hard to argue with. Uh, we did have a motion by Commissioner Hinkle, and it looks like it's been seconded. I have a motion to second. Please cast your votes when available. And that application is approved. Thank you. Uh, next item on the agenda is 25, Mr. Butler. Case number SPUD 1285 is an application to rezone 8703 Northwestern Avenue from R1 to SPUD 1285. Yes, my name is Preston Sullivan, uh, 2649 Northwest 14th Street. I'm uh, here on behalf of the, ac the applicant, Austin Hayes. Um, where'd he go? There he is. Um, this property has uh, been residential for quite some time, and there has been no residential home or anyone living there using it in residential capacity for quite some time. Uh, we are recommending or we are asking to uh, have this SPUD to uh, be C3 uh, with certain limitations uh, as set forth on the application. Uh, we do agree to uh, the TEs, uh, all of them. Um, and if there are any questions or any clarifications that you all need, uh, I'm here to answer any questions. So, um the only question I have on this, C3, is retail sales and services provided in here? Uh, I believe it. I, the way the original application was listed, it, this property shall not be used as. I did it in the, in the negative, uh, but uh, I, 
believe retail was not included on the uh, exclusions. Got it. So these are the things that won't be used, but otherwise in C3 it will be used. It, can, it could be used. Correct. Got Correct. It. And the other, the only other addition that we have is uh, the medical marijuana dispensary has, has been uh, added. My understanding is that that's allowed by retail sales and services regardless. Correct. It, I just wanted to clarify since the, the rules are, uh, I just wanted to Evolving. just wanted to add it on there just so it's clear. Understood. Um, okay. And there are three TEs. You're, you're in agreement with all of those. Yes. Okay. Uh, well. I, I did not get any concerns from Commissioner Powers that were relayed to her from residents. I did speak with her about this site because it is a very strange site. It is. Um, that frankly has been vacant for a very long time. So if you can generate some sales tax out of here, I think that's a win. We have a um, tenant. We have a tenant lined up, uh, pending. Uh, they're they're pending this this uh, approval. Great. We need police cars and streets and stuff. So cool. <laughs> uh, any questions for the applicant from other commissioners? Seeing none, I do not have anybody signed up to speak on this, so if there's no further discussion, I, I just need a motion from somebody. I'll motion to approve item SPUD 1285. I'll have a motion and an electronic second, maybe, more buffering. This is how we create suspense for you, our applicant. <laughs> I still think we need music for this. I agree. We need something because the downtime is really eerie for all of us, I promise you. Please cast your votes when available. That application is approved unanimously. Good luck. Good luck, Mr. Hayes. Uh, next item was 26, which has been continued. So the next item would be item 27. 27 is case PUD 1797, application uh, to rezone 301 East Britain Road from R1 to PUD 1797. Good afternoon, Tim Johnson here on behalf of the applicant. Um, this is a uh, application to uh, create some uh, uh, medical offices. Uh, as you can see by the site plan, uh, there is uh, this site plan as well as if you zoom out and look at the area, it's been growing in the medical industry over the last 10 years. We've been involved in 90% of the projects along Oklahoma, all the way to the north where Oklahoma ends. There's uh, three hospitals and several, a big, very large pharmaceutical building that's under construction. And then the need for additional uh, medical offices is what this proposal is. The landowner of this property is also one of the major developers on Oklahoma. And um, so the, as the staff has pointed out, we're in conformance. Uh, we're compatible. Uh, there's two TEs that I'd like to address. Uh, TE1 talks about extending North Lincoln and improving North Lincoln Avenue to the north side of our property. And what I'd like to amend that TE to say is that if we take access on Lincoln, that we will improve Lincoln Avenue to the north edge of our driveway. That's the same agreement we made when we did the development at 102nd Street north of this site. Uh, to bring the improvement from Britain to the point of access into our property. And on TE2, uh, uh, it talks about two freestanding signs, and what we would like to do is just adhere to the sign ordinance, whatever the sign ordinance be, ends up being, because it's in the process of flux at this point in time, and we'd agree to meet that sign ordinance as it's approved in the future. And with that, I'd request your approval. So, uh, Mr. Johnson, just to be clear, we would strike TE2, right. in your view, because your MDS accounts for adhering to the base zoning regulation then in effect at the time you pull the building permit, essentially. That's correct. Just to make sure everybody's clear on that, I just wanted to clarify. So, um, again, I just happen to be, I, I, for the other commissioner's benefit, I was on a call with Commissioner Pennington and Mr. Johnson and Mark Zitzow on this application. Uh, walked us through it. Commissioner Pennington did not have any questions or concerns on the amendments that are being suggested to the TE. Those were discussed on the call. Um, I think it's a reasonable request, frankly. Um, and, you know, what I would just say is the language for TE1 uh, should, should say the PUDs, uh, Lincoln Boulevard shall be improved to city standard along the PUD to the north edge of the northernmost driveway. So um, that, that, Agreed to that. 
seems clear to me. Any questions or concerns about that from commissioners? I do not have anybody signed up to speak on this item. Anybody else want to be heard on this item today? Hearing and seeing none, I'll take a motion when somebody wants to make it. I'll take a shot at it. Uh, a motion to approve PUD 1797, uh, striking TE2 and amending TE1 to say if access is taken from North Lincoln Boulevard, North Lincoln Boulevard shall be improved to the city standards along the PUDs along the length of, to the north edge of the northernmost drive. We agree with that. Good with that. I have a motion, I'll, and when I have an electronic second, we can vote. Please cast your votes when available. And that application is approved unanimously. Uh, next item is item 28. 28 is case number PUD 1796, an application to rezone 12106 Penny Drive from R1 to PUD 1796. Good afternoon, Brad Reed with Craft and Soul, 300 Point Parkway Boulevard, here on behalf of the applicant. What we have today is a PUD that allows for single family development with a modified lot size, uh, 40 foot wide, uh, 4,800 minimum square foot. Um, we only have one TE, and unfortunately, we cannot agree to that. Uh, I think you, we've seen this TE quite a few times. Um, it says all lots shall maintain a 100 foot setback from the top of existing stream bank. Um, I believe this has been stricken quite a few times. The, the issue that we have with this is what is the stream bank? How is this defined? Um, you know, in some areas of this, there's a, a pretty well-defined stream bank, but is it the two-year storm or is it the hundred-year storm? Um, so there's also spots in this where there's not a defined stream bank, so it floods out. It kind of has some, um, you know, some undefinable characters. So we don't want to be, agree to that 100 foot because it's arbitrary. Um, we will agree to all drainage ordinances that the city has, um, and we do ask that that be restricted. Is there a we? I, I, I hope we ask this question every time, at least we intend to. Is there a distance you feel comfortable committing to from the stream bank? Um, no, it's, it's, we will provide a repairing area through that. That's a, it's a jurisdictional blue line stream. Um, we've d already dealt with the Army Corps of Engineers on this, but um, I, I don't know that we can, be, just because it's, we have the ability to go in there and, and encroach in some areas, um, but the, you know, the, the drainage engineering department uh, it's very strict on this, but you know we'll meet all of those requirements, but um, we don't agree to the one, 100 foot is the, the problem that we have. I understand. Um, is there any of this area that would be, is gonna be floodplain, or are you gonna be able to build outside the floodplain entirely? So that is a, that's a, we have actually marked on here wrong. It says FEMA floodplain. That's a, uh, an, an estimated urbanized floodplain. Uh, but again, we have the ability to go in there, add some fill um, to change that up slightly, but that's an, an estimation of what we have currently right so but is it your belief that you'll be able to remove the lots you're showing here out of floodplain yes and if we and if we don't they they will not be built um do we need some sort of uh this is a question for staff do we need some sort of commitment from the applicant on that front is there from the floodplain? yeah um i i think that's that, that was our one of our concerns so yeah i think if, if we had to memorialize that that would that would be helpful any issue with that but if 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 that we, we won't build lots in the floodplain. They'll be, we can agree that they'll be uh, handled within a uh, drainage related common area. Got it. So uh, just trying to generate some language here. I do, well, real quick. Do I have anybody signed up, or I don't have anybody signed up. Is there anybody here that wants to be heard on this item? This is item 28, PUD 1796. This is a Ward 8 case, so this is my ward. So I just jumped in. Uh, don't see anybody. Commissioners, any other concerns on this? Okay, hearing none. Uh, Let's try some language just to get staff comfortable that what we're going to do, we can enforce because really this is the zoning phase. I just want to make sure so we could just simply say no structure shall be built in floodplain area. We can agree that um, all 100 year urbanized floodplain will be handled, will be maintained within a drainage related common area. Okay, so no, in other words, no, no lots will even, no, no part of a lot will be in the 100 year floodplain. I like that language. No, no, no part of a building lot will be in the 100 year floodplain. Yes. Got it. Are you good with that? Yeah. Is that helpful? Okay. 
So let's go with that. So if someone could aid me here, uh, I certainly support the application otherwise. Um, and this is just a recommendation to city council, but uh, the TE we need to add is, was just articulated pretty nicely there by Mr. Reed. if someone can take a crack at that. I'll, I'm sorry I'm writing, but I'll, I'll take a shot at it. Thank you, Commissioner Clare. Okay, I'll make a motion to approve PUD 1796 adding TE2 that no portion of a building lot will be included in an area designated within the 100 year urbanized floodplain. He nailed it. Someone to second that thing, let's vote. Oh, right. Thank you, uh, municipal councilor. So, and we would be striking TE1 to replace. Yep. Yes, thank you. So we have struck TE1 and added the language TE2 per Commissioner Claire as agreed to by the applicant. Please cast your votes. And that application is approved. Now we can talk about the flat. Item 29. 29, uh, C7250, preliminary plat of Robertson's Landing rezone. And that is located um, south of Northwest 122nd Street and east of North Morgan Road. Again, I do not have anybody signed up to speak uh, on the plat portion of this. Uh, Commissioner Claire, if, if you'd like to take a shot at a motion, uh, we need to add TE6 with the same language, please. Before we do that, I'll just note the design of the preliminary plaque conforms with the subdivision regulations as they relate to access requirements for subdivisions greater than 200 lots, and it meets the uh, requirements outlined by the PUD we just recommended approval on. So with that, we can take a shot. Uh, I'll make a motion to approve item C7250, adding TE6, that no portion of the building will be included building lot will be included in an area designated within the 100 year urbanized floodway. I have a motion and a second. Please cast your votes when available. And that application is approved. Good luck. Uh, next item on the agenda is item 30. 30 is PUD 1799, application rezone 1101 South Morgan Road from C3 to PUD 1799. Once again, David Box, 522 Colcord Drive, here on behalf of the applicant. Uh, Tim Johnson, the civil engineer for the project, is also here. Uh, this is a piece that would allow for uh, some additional multifamily along Morgan Road. This area, as uh, you all know, is uh, subject to being changed very rapidly with the turnpike and all the other things going on in the southwest sector. Um, it is conformance with the conference of plan. Staff does recommend approval with two TEs, both of which we agree to. We'd be happy to answer any questions. Uh, Commissioner Coffey, this is your word. I'll let you uh, lead off our discussion if you have any comments. I think the application is uh, pretty straightforward. I've not received comments or concerns from anyone uh, in my ward. Uh, I think it's appropriate uh, for the location. So unless there are comments or concerns. I don't have any further comments. Uh, I do not have anybody signed up to speak on item 30. Is there anybody here, members of the public, that wish to be heard on this item today? Seeing none, other commissioners have comments on this one? I recommend approval of PUD 1799. I have a motion. Do I have a second? Pardon us while we buffer. There it is. Please cast your votes when available. And that application is approved. Thank you. Uh, items 31 and 32 were continued until our January 28th docket. So our next item today is item 33. 33 is PUD 1802, application rezone 9749 Northwest Expressway from C3 to PUD 1802. Uh, Mr. Chairman, Blaine Nice, 100 North Broadway for the applicant. This is a property that's currently zoned C3 and it's a similar item to one you entertained in December. Um, uh, we'd like to have automobile 
cells there and, and to get a special permit you have to have 300 feet of frontage. We don't have that so we're applying for the PED rather than the variance. There were two TEs in the staff report and we agree to both of those. And I think that was it. And I'd have, be happy to answer any questions to ask for approval. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Clare, this is your ward. I'll let you uh, lead our discussion. Yeah, um, again, pretty, pretty straightforward app. I have not heard any, uh, had any discussions or any concerns uh, from, from anyone, and I, nor do I have any uh, concerns. So I'm, I'm happy uh, to support this application and make a motion um, when we're ready for that. There's no one else prepared to speak. Okay. Uh, commissioners, anybody else have comments on this one? My, my only thought on this one is just uh, if, if you'd be agreeable. I don't think you have any at the moment, but I believe I saw that it was possible. Yeah, it's possible. Um, would you be willing to agree just to limit uh, dumpster location 50 feet from any uh, residentially zoned oh, property? Certainly. Yeah. And then the only thing I was going to ask you, uh, Commissioner Clare, on this one is the north side of this property is going to abut Hefner Road. On the other side of Hefner, is a, I believe it's a to be constructed residential development that's uh, in process, if I'm not mistaken, or it's at least beginning that process. So there is a great likelihood there will be homes over there. Um, I just thought maybe we might include some trees or something along that north boundary just to try to limit, you know, the, the sight line there, but because that's not the visibility they're going for, they're going for Northwest Expressway. So it would seem to me that it would just kind of aid, you know, whatever winds up across the street in terms of a backyard. Yeah, did you did you need display frontage on on Hefner? Well, we, and, and that's this is conceptual, you know, plan at this point. So what the use on the on the north side, I'm, I'm not sure it's not going to be the same sort of use as on the south, not going to be automobile. And um, I'm certainly will comply with the regulations uh, in place. And I think um, I drove the property couple of days ago myself and know exactly what you're talking about and I don't know uh, what the commission what kind of stipulation you'd like to put or condition you'd like to put in there what I guess what do you well just I mean uh, something reasonable like I mean you're not you don't have a huge distance there I think it's 264 feet of frontage back there and, and Commissioner Clare, if you look at the site plan there's no, not even a, a, a attempt to build back there yet right. uh, I'm just thinking about sort of the future there um, because we're rezoning the entirety of this track, not just the you know, south half that affronts Northwest Expressway or something. So, I don't know, 30 foot centers or something, just something to put well, some trees so, over there. So that should be, that should be a frontage uh, and the landscape plan will require a frontage, yeah. uh, landscape to meet frontage requirements, so. Yeah, okay. we, would, we certainly will require, uh, comply with the landscape requirements in place and I think that's true that oh, okay. because yeah, it so, is frontage. So it's covered by the landscape requirements. Then I'm good then. If that's, okay. if, you, if, that's, if, you, if you thought that through, I just, that was the only mm -hmm. thing I had. So if you're yeah. good with that, that's okay. good with me. All right. Well, then I'm happy to, if there's no further discussion or comments, happy to make a motion to approve PUD 1802, adding TE3 that limits dumpsters to no less than 50 feet from residential properties. I have a motion and a second, hopefully, to recommend approval to City Council on PUD 1802. Please cast your votes when available. That application is approved. Good luck, Mr. Nice. Thank you. Uh, next item on the agenda, item 34 was continued. So the next item would be item 35. Item 35 is SPUD 1280, application to rezone 17121 Southeast 59th Street from AA to SPUD 1280. David Box, 522 Colcord Drive, on behalf of the applicant. Uh, this SPUD is to allow for a, a, like a, a family compound. So it's currently AA, which um, the lot being under five acres is, is not in conformance with its current zoning. What we seek to do is to just to allow two lots on the almost five acres. Um, yeah, there you can see a, a, a site plan. Uh, like I said, it, it is a family member of the person that owns it now. Um, in uh, the, the technical evaluations, Staff does ask us to commit to a, a minimum lot size, and we can commit to a, a minimum lot size of 1.65 acres. So what we would ask is that TE2C, uh, um, I guess, be revised to just say the minimum lot size shall be 1.65 acres. Um, 2B, permitted uses, use shall be single family. That, that's fine with us as long as it's understood that 
We do have uh, two lots is what we're permitted to do. Uh, and 2A, that accessory buildings shall comply with the RA2 standards. We do agree with that. So with that, I'd be happy to answer any questions. It's worth noting that if you look at the property to the east and then the one to the east of that, Cindy, if you go to the zoning, please, uh, those are zoned uh, RA, which would allow lots um, down to an acre and less uh, under certain circumstances. So uh, we do believe it to be um, a nice transition from the, the one acre, 1.65, going to, to the five acres. There's no issues that I'm aware of. I don't believe I saw any protest. Uh, and I'd be happy to answer any questions. Thank you, Mr. Box. Commissioner Privet, this is your ward. I'll let you lead our discussion. Okay. Um, this recommended denial because of the, <clears throat> it doesn't meet the Royal Luda. Um, me personally, I don't have any issues with it at 1.65 a lot. Uh, it seems to be uh, reasonable. Um, do we have anybody signed up to speak? I do not have anybody signed up. Is there anybody who wanted to be heard on this item? Again, just for the sake of being gracious, it's SPUD 1280. I don't see anybody. Okay. Uh, I'll take a stab at a motion. Uh, make a motion to approve uh, PUD, SPUD 1280 with the changes to the P or to the TEs, uh, specific lot size being no less than 1.65. And what was the other one, David? Sorry. Oh, I think that's resolved by the fact that you're own, you've got one building per lot. And I okay. think that's what the T clarify. Okay. Yeah, so, so TE to B, yeah, it, it's just that uh, we agree that that's the use just out of abundance of caution, just want to be clear that there are two lots within the SPUD. Okay. With the minimum lot size being 1.65 acres. All right. I'm good, I'm good with that motion. We, we've amended right. basically TE2C to 1.65 acres. All right. So I have a motion. I just need a second. I have a motion, a second to recommend approval to City Council on SPUD 1280. Please cast your votes. And that application is approved. Good luck. Thank you. Next item is item 36. Case number SPUD 1287 is an application um, to rezone 2600 Northeast 63rd Street from PUD 280 to PUD 1287. Jason Cady with Mass Architects. Excellent. Go ahead and give us your address too. Uh, Let's 1200 Leslie Lane, Norman, Oklahoma. Excellent. And if you would, I know that you are super tall and that mic is not. So if you could just be careful, she's fragile. She's very fragile. <laughs> uh, just be sure and speak down to it when you get a chance. All right. Go ahead. Um, just a, this is to allow the, uh, existing Remington Park PUD, I think it was 280. Um, it allows us to put a warehouse on this uh, city county health department site. Okay, thank you. That is it. Uh, this is Commissioner Pennington's ward. Uh, I spoke to him about it. He did not have any specific concerns or grave concerns. Uh, I think the applicant did a good job here of limiting the uses that we would typically be uh, concerned about if they were to get too close to a residential district. He included that language. Um, he also included, as I recall, the language regarding the dumpsters, so um, which we appreciate. The only thing I have here, which is really not your concern, but I just want to bring it up at an opportunity when it's not being discussed pointedly, is that this application specifically says that the medical marijuana industry uses shall be prohibited in this PUD. Um, we are undoubtedly going to see more of this stuff. Uh, I had reached out to a municipal counselor's office about a case that uh, was brought to my attention, uh, cloudy mornings versus the city of Broken Arrow, about uh, when you can, can and cannot uh, regulate these uses. Um, I'm, I have a little bit of concern about specifically prohibiting this use because we are allowing retail sales and services generally, and then we are specifically not allowing that use. I think that is dangerous policy and precedent for us to set. We only have six people here today. I would advocate that we strike that uh, from the PUD for the reason that I think it's very bad policy. Uh, I did get, and uh, Susan Randall can speak up if she wishes, but uh, she, we don't know, in, in our opinion yet, 
uh, if a specific prohibition of PUD would violate that Supreme Court case, where it was said that you know, cities can use their zoning tools to regulate it, but they can't prohibit it or prevent it. Uh, PUD is a specific ordinance, so I don't know whether or not uh, prohibiting it would actually be permitted under that court case. Um, it concerns me a little bit. I also think that we set a bad precedent here publicly if people come in and have the expectation that they can prohibit that uh, and they point to other cases we've done that on and they say, well, you did that there, do it here. I just think this is very dangerous policy. Under our ordinances today, if you have retail sales and services general, you are allowed to operate a medical marijuana dispensary. Do you agree with that, uh, Ms. Randall? Yes. So, I agree with that. But my, my point on I, I really think the property owner should, I mean, restrict that. Whoever owns that property, if they want to restrict it in their cabinets or whatever, then yeah, sure, go ahead. But yeah, not our place. I don't. I would, I would say. I, I think it is. It's just down a little bit low, I think. The only thing I would say is um, that the only thing that we can't do is to strictly prohibit um, dispensaries within the city limits. So my opinion is that you could, if the property owners agreed, you could put this in a PED. I don't think that that violates anything um, so, so, legally. Right. So just for the sake of the commission, because again, I know we're going to see, I don't know, 100 of these between now and 2022 or something. Um, if someone were to come in and insist that it be prohibited and we're put to that decision, you believe we have the authority to prohibit it within a PUD, e even though it's allowed by retail sales and services? I, if the parties agree, I think so. And if there's a, I think if the parties agree, I think so for sure. If there was a, one of the parties did not agree, I think you would have to make sure that you have a legitimate reason under your, because you're just looking at your normal zoning mm -hmm. um, objectives. Okay. And so you couldn't just say you don't want it there. But you'd have to say that there was some type of compatibility issue or um, it could be challenged, you know, in, on appeal in district court if you made an arbitrary decision. And, and that's and that's what I'm, I'm asking you guys to think about. Again, I'm sorry, to, to, but it's we're going to face this at a point where it's really contentious. I don't have, even have anybody sign up to speak on this one today, which is why I bring it up now before it is contentious. If we were having that argument with people, what would be the objective criteria you would point to that makes a medical marijuana dispensary any less compatible than a convenience store that sells beer or a person who wants to sell candy bars or cell phones? What, what is the difference in our zoning uh, in our, in, in our tools that we can use objectively to prohibit that? I just think that's something that you guys should think about. Do you well, I, I think there are some issues as far as like odor and things like that, that you may want to, um, you know, if there were neighborhoods nearby or something like that, that would be something that you could, you know, put like a provision in the PUD or something to um, consider that. Got it. Uh, Do you have comments? No, I, I think what you guys are saying is right on. I'm following it and I think it's right. Now let me ask on this application and um, I did not follow it though. Is the applicant voluntarily willing to restrict themselves then and the municipal counselor's officer so that is fine for them to do it and it's fine for us to approve it that way. Okay, so that's what we have here, right? Yep, that's so, you're right. So your point of setting bad precedent, I think that's okay. Um, that if they voluntarily do it, we prove that. Okay. Okay. No, that's great. I yeah. just I wanted to stop a moment and just make sure that we had that discussion. Like I said, because at some point we're gonna be having it with a, a whole room full of angry people. Uh, and right now we don't. We have a very tall person, but he doesn't seem angry. Um, so uh, if there's no further discussion on it, did you include that on your own accord or was that done by discussion with? I'm, I'm at a loss to what you are actually. In your PUD, you specifically say medical marijuana industry uses shall be prohibited in this PUD. Okay. Are you on the right that was a yeah. Oh, you're on 37. I think you're on the next one. <laughs> Am I? 1287. Oh, look at that. My bad. We'll see. That's why I don't normally talk. <laughs> you, no wonder you're confused. <laughs> I was going to Go say. Go right this, ahead. This was for a warehouse. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Rusty. You were trying to be polite, but. I was still looking for it. <laughs> yeah. Go, go, go ahead. Yeah, we're good. I, I, again, I don't have anybody decided to speak. That was the only uh, the issue, which actually applies to the next case. So if, if there's no further discussion, we can take a motion on it. <laughs> no way that the city county health department. That's right. 
<laughs> well, in Commissioner Pennington's absence, I'm happy to, to make a motion to approve SPUD 1287. Thank you. I have a motion. Do I have a second? I have a motion and a second. Please cast your votes when available. And that application is approved unanimously. Thank you very much. Next item, item 37, the one I wanted to talk about. Go ahead, Mr. Butler. Item 37 is case PUD 1803, an application to rezone 3303 Northeast 23rd Street from PUD 1558 to PUD 1803. The not so tall Tim Johnson here on behalf of the applicant. Despite what the staff report says, it's not Brad Reed, it's this old guy. Uh, so this uh, application has been before you a couple times. The last time we brought it before you, it included a, the, the piece towards Coltrane that says vacant. So that has uh, been sold. Uh, our client has come back with this application to specifically add the use unit that would allow for indoor uh, sports activities. And specifically, our, we have a, a user that wants to put some indoor batting cages. And um, so, and I've heard all the discussion, and we had this conversation with regard to the uh, medical marijuana. Uh, our, our client was indifferent to it. The staff had asked us to take it out, and we did. And so I would say that it's uh, our preference to go ahead and take it out. Um, one TE on this and that uh, discusses the uh, uh, specific plan. So uh, in TE number one, it says the first specific plan submitted shall provide access circulation for the entire site. We would ask that that be modified to be the second plan. The first plan is what you see up there right now. That's all that's going to go in in this first go around. By the time we do our second site plan approval, will know more about how the property is going to develop and be able to really show the staff more information. So that's the one change that we'd ask. Got it. We had also discussed uh, on this item the uh, restriction of uh, spectator sports entertainment outdoor to the use of batting cages and outdoor softball fields. Yeah, so, the, so we went back and researched that, and the use unit that we've included is just for indoor. It does not allow for outdoor. Oh, it does not. Okay. I was thinking that... Uh, participant recreation and entertainment indoor 8300.55 was what would allow that and that spectator sports entertainment restricted 8300.69 would allow for outdoor is that not accurate I think it was our research that it would not allow for outdoor it would still be indoor but okay if that I mean if that's true that's my only concern is the outdoor component yep. so and we'd be happy to restrict it to the indoor component this time so. do, you, do we know that for sure, sure. JJ 8300.69, is that indoor only? I'm on the right case this time. I'm absolutely certain of it. The, the batting cages would be spectator, sports, indoor. Right, but if they were to locate, would, would 8300.69, which is spectator, sports, and entertainment, would that allow for outdoor uses? No. No. It's all, it's all indoor. Okay. It has to specifically Excellent. say outdoor. Okay. Got it. That's great. Um, you're saying that staff had asked you to prohibit the medical marijuana use? Right, anticipating that there might be an issue in this area, and we concurred. Okay, as long as you're in agreement, the discussion we just had on the wrong item, I apply to this item. I just think this is bad policy. I'd encourage you guys to think about it. So uh, I won't make a big deal about it again, but that's, that's my two cents on it. Um, commissioners, any other comments or questions of the applicant? I do not have anybody signed up to speak on this one either. Hearing and seeing none, I'd take a motion. I'll make a motion. Oh, looks like somebody did it. Already did it. I, 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 I finally just up. wanted to click the button before you guys. <laughs> <laughs> it works. I have a motion and a second. Please cast your votes when available. With the amended TE. With the amended TEs. Yep. As outlined by the record. Thank you. That application is approved unanimously. Have a great day. Uh, next item would be item 38. 38 is PC 10711, application to rezone 17600 Southeast 59th Street from AA to RA, single family. Once again, David Box, 522 Colcord Drive. This application is a 35-acre site uh, along 59th Street. It is just 
uh, I'm going to say half a mile, if not less, east of the previous item we had along Southeast 59th. Cindy, could you display the exhibit that I had sent you? Okay, so the, the exhibit you see before you is my best attempt of, uh, at being an engineer. Um, the, the blue outlined is the subject track. The red are uh, RA, uh, one acre subdivision. So you see uh, the red to our immediate east is all one acre RA. Uh, and then you have a big block of RA zone property to our west. There are actually two separate tracks, but uh, altogether it, it's all RA. One has been developed, one has not yet. A significant change in this area is that the turnpike uh, is coming through that eastern loop along Southeast 59th. My understanding is that there is a full interchange at Southeast 59th. So we believe RA um, one acre lots to be an appropriate use uh, for the property. Uh, we believe that's been proven out by the other RA developments that exist in the area, including uh, the uh, property that abuts us to the east. And in fact, the uh, subdivision to our east, if you could go to just the aerial, Cindy, um, stubbed out a street, uh, presumably Southeast 66, in anticipation of a similar type of development. So, uh, with that, we would ask for your approval. I'm not aware of any protest uh, that's come in. Uh, there's none in the packet that I saw. Uh, I'd be happy to answer any questions. I don't have anybody signed up to speak. I'll ask uh, the public in just a moment. Um, Commissioner Pruitt, this is your ward, sir. Yep. Um, this one, similar to the one we had down the street, this one's a little more of a pill to swallow, um, but still, uh, to me, it seems pretty compatible with the uh, surrounding areas with the... Uh, acre lots and RA and also the uh, turnpike being put in which wasn't there when the this luda was applied um, is there anybody signed up to speak uh, there is no one signed up no. to speak is there anybody here that wants to be heard on this item today again just uh, for the purposes of clarification this is PC 10711 David how many lots total are we talking 25 we don't have, we'll have to come back and plot it uh, but you can anticipate you call it around 30 would be my guess when you take out the right of way for the road and all that. It, Brevin, if it makes you feel any better, Commissioner Brevin, I, I agree with you. I mean, yeah, th this right. is the Southwest Turnpike Loop anew. Uh, mm -hmm. We're going to start to see these cases crop up all for requests for density, especially along where there's turnpike interchanges. And we're going to have people, you know, I'm surprised there's no nobody signed up. It, right. But um, I think we're going to see more people upset because this is going to start to really intensify in terms of the density over here because of the turnpike. So, um, yeah, it makes perfect sense to me. Yep. Okay, nobody signed up to speak. I'll uh, recommend approval of are we at PC 10711. I have a motion uh, and a need a second. I have a motion and a second. Please cast your votes when available. And that application is approved. Thank you. Item 39. 39 is a comprehensive plan amendment to 2020 uh, number eight, consideration of a proposed map amendment to the comprehensive plan, changing the land use topology area designation in an area located south of Southwest 164th Street and east of Southwestern Avenue from rural low to rural medium intensity. And I'll go ahead and uh, give a brief presentation. I'll be pinch hitting for uh, Kim Cooperhart who wasn't able to be here. Um, so here's the, this, this site is a, or this map shows the location, uh, again, at Western and 164. Um, there is, a, uh, it's a 5.1 acre parcel, and the request, again, is to change the LUDA to, or the land use topology area, rather, to allow for what we call a, a cluster single family residential, where there's uh, some lots placed on uh, a certain net area and uh, other area left for uh, some open space. So here's where the subject site is. It's in the very south, southern part of the city. Uh, and it's, uh, it's right now, this entire section of land is, is designated rural low, across the street from urban future. Next slide, please. Uh, if you just, here's what the comp plan, comprehensive plan says about rural low. It's uh, areas where these large lots are expected to remain for a long time to come. Uh, whereas rural medium supports projects with a gross density that it's, it's a little bit, it allows a little more development, uh, with smaller lots, just to summarize. Uh, you can see, we normally look at, a, when we do a CPA, conference plan amendment like this, we look at the fire service. 
This does not have great fire service, uh, but it's at the, as I said, at the southern edge of the city. There's really limited opportunity to improve that. So the existing zoning uh, is AA, right next to uh, PUD to the north. Um, some, some other development further to the east, uh, but, but right now it's characterized by AA zoning and, and low density development. There's a, a, an image uh, showing a little bit more detail about the, the surrounding land uses. There's a um, residential neighborhood just to the east with very large lots. So what, we, uh, what the finding is, is um, um, or excuse me, the recommendation um, to approve the request to change the LUTA on the six point, looks like we've got a typo, I think it's 5.1 acres from rural low to rural medium. And then I think that is it. Is, that, is there another slide? Okay, that's it. Thank, Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Butler. Um, commissioners, questions of staff on this one? <coughs> okay, given the, the, the nature of these uh, cases, I, I do have a couple people that are signed up to speak on item 39 and 40. Um, and I realize that this can be a little bit confusing for members of the public because we're dealing with the comp plan amendment first and then the rezoning. Um, I'll, we'll, I'll ask at this time if there's anybody who wants to be heard uh, on this case related to the comp plan. Uh, and if there is, certainly this would be the time to do it. I had a couple people signed up. Uh, you're welcome to comment on the zoning portion, which will be next for item 40 as well. Um, Mr. Box, do you want to add anything to staff's? Discussion of it. Uh, I mean, just briefly, you know, uh, David Box, 522 Callcore Drive. We are the applicant here. Um, we we looked at a couple different concepts um, on, on this site as it related to the comp plan. Um, you know, the provision of sewer is not really that likely. Um, we are. It's a bit unique in that it's 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 kind of on the edge to the west, as uh, the director um, highlighted, is slated to be urban. Um, it, it, it's it's urban future. I've always thought that was urban reserve. Perhaps we've changed our nomenclature because of my, uh, you know, consistent of beating them over the head about asking who's reserving it, but urban future, it has a better ring to it. So it is anticipated that uh, those, those areas to the west and to the south, and even if you go further outside of the city limits, almost all that property is in control of uh, private developers. So it is anticipated that this will, this area will develop with greater density than, than has happened in the past. This little um, you know, spot right there. We think rural medium, frankly, provides a nice transition from the rural low to the east as you go to us, rural medium, and then to the, to the urban future, uh, and someday urban low to the west. So we support staff's uh, position in their recommendation for approval. Thank you very much. Uh, Commissioner Hinkle, do you have any comments on this? I, like I said, I'm going to give people a chance to speak, even though it's on the comp plan, but I, I think gonna can't have one without the other, so. Uh, does it make sense that we go to the other one first? Because if the other one doesn't pass, then this doesn't need to be voted in. Is that? No, we, we take the comp plan amendment first, uh, which we've always done, which again, I, I grant you, it, it feels a little clunky to be honest, but um, it, it is what it is. So uh, just from the comp plan perspective, I certainly understand why staff recommends approval here. It would be very hard to recommend anything but approval for the comp plan amendment uh, because uh, as for everything they laid out, um, all the services that are going to get to this area, which is the very corner of the city, essentially, are there. You have a PUD to the east and to the south, just basically a half section away, an 80-acre section away that is R1. You've got R1 to the northeast, um, and so you've kind of got this smattering of residential, residentially zoned property. To me, saying that you're going to take a rural low to a rural medium here is not a stretch, to put it mildly. So the comp plan amendment to me is very straightforward. I, I, don't, I don't see any, any real issue there. But um, if you want me to, Commissioner Inkle, I'll go ahead and ask the people that would like to be heard. Because like let's, I said, I know it's weird, but I want to give them a chance. Let's do that. OK. Uh, the first person I have signed up for this is, uh, and if, if I mispronounce your name, I'm, I apologize in advance. But Julie McMahon, are you with us today? And just uh, be sure when you get up, give us your name and address for the record, please. My name is Julie McMahon. I live at 725 Pleasant Drive, Oklahoma City, Oklahoma, 73170. 
Um, I, uh, I live at the property directly east of the property in question. I've submitted a formal petition of the homeowners in the subdivisions of the Pleasant Estates, the Haswell Estates, and the McLaughlin Estates, which surround the property in question. I live on a seven and a half acre lot just adjacent to that property towards the east. 43 homeowners have signed a formal petition and stand in unity to oppose the amendment of the land use typology and the proposal to rezone the property. 100% of the homeowners of Pleasant Estates, 100% of the homeowners of the Haswell Estates, and all the multiple homeowners who were contacted in the McLaughlin Estates stand in solidarity against these proposals. The homeowners, many of whom are aging uh, and compromised health and quarantine via, uh, exposure of COVID-19, haven't uh, attended today, but they have granted me express permission and authority to act and to speak on their behalf today. I'm a homeschooling mom of seven children. I don't feel like I'm the best choice to represent such a large group of clearly more qualified <laughs> citizens. I can't use all the fancy language or fully understand all the technical terminology that's been thrown around throughout this process. I have no knowledge, education, or experience in the zoning process, but even a layperson such as I can see the egregious discrepancy that would exist if you approved the amendment of the land use typology and the proposal to rezone. I'm not sure how a typical law-abiding citizen is supposed to ensure the stability of their home and property if it is likely and permissible for one landowner to come in and change the entire area. The plan layout for the area that has existed since the long-standing established development of this area. Many of us have lived in these established subdivisions for decades. Many of us have lived there for 25 years or more. Those like the Kayla Haswell family, her brother Wayne and his family, and their parents, Jerry, or excuse me, Larry and Janine Haswell, have lived in this area their entire lives. The Haswell lineage has come from a territorial farm, which still stands in the quarter section that I live on. They were the ones who plotted, surveyed, and sold the five-acre tracks back in 1977, where we all now reside on that quarter section of land. The original intent of the plotting of those original tracks were for AA zoning, one home on a minimum of five acres. The Haswell Estates were developed and zoned purposely in this way, and soon after, the Pleasant Estates and the McLaughlin Estates formed subdivisions in the same consistent manner. The Gastons purchased their property in October 2020 and want to completely change the entire land use typology for their own benefit. Who will benefit? That is the question. Clearly not any of the homeowners who exist. Gentlemen, if this is not an obvious case of spot zoning for the benefit of one landowner at the expense of all the rest, I don't know what is. It seems as though the long-standing residents of these subdivisions are being asked to play by entirely new rules because a newcomer has entered the area. Neighborhoods can and have popped up around us, and that's fine, but to increase the density amidst us significantly conflicts with the existing surrounding land use. When raising my children, I teach them it's not right to come into the sandbox and take the toys away from the other kids who've already spent time playing there. I teach them that when they go to someone else's home, they can't expect to be the one to choose who's, uh, which games to play because they're a guest in their house. To make a ruling that one landowner can move into the area and change the entire land use typology is a gross violation on those of us who've been residing in this area for decades. I would like to mention the fact that your own document, the staff report for the map change on page six, item number three, states that the site, the area exceeds the rural response times for fire and emergency services set by the Oklahoma City Fire Department. We have experienced that ourselves. We've had to call for emergency services and they didn't come with a very close time range. To increase the density in the area which we live from rural low to rural medium puts a strain on an area which already exceeds response times from emergency services. This does not seem wise. To change the land use typology is arbitrary and uncomplimentary to the existing conditions. To rule in favor of amending the land use typology simply to allow the Gastons to erect multiple houses on five acre tracks seems like poor planning. The Gastons could build multiple homes and erect an agrihood in a more suitable area. I'm not opposed to the idea of an agrihood, and the Gastons seem like nice people. But to allow this land to be developed with multiple homes on attractive land where other homeowners have built one home on a minimum of five acres seems inconsistent with the current land use, especially when my seven and a half acres borders theirs. Changing the land use typology puts all of us homeowners at risk. We fear that we will watch multiple homes being built around us in the future within our group. 
uh, property values will inevitably pl plummet. Some of us have referred to the city's comprehensive plan before buying our properties and saw this entire area to be designated as rural residential with five acres or more for each home. We felt assured that we would be safe in laying down roots and starting families here. We have raised families here. We have taught kids how to ride horses, fish, appreciate wildlife, and care for gardens here. We've even buried pets here. Now it feels as though we are being pushed out of a land plan that has been the enjoyment of all the homeowners in this area. I don't want to have to feel like I will have to uproot and move somewhere else because I'm being pushed out of the sandbox. An attempt was made similar to this one in 2008, case number PC10184. The date of the hearing was August the 14th of 2008 to change the rezoning of a property located in the Haswell Estates. It was denied by the city of Oklahoma City. I'm appealing to you as a parent, a homeowner, a mother, and a concerned citizen of Oklahoma City to please deny the request of the amendment for the t land use typology and the application to approve SPUD 1268. Thank you. Thank you very much. We appreciate you coming down and sharing your concerns with us very much. We really do. Okay. Any questions uh, at this point from anybody? No? Thank you. Thank you. Um, the next person I have signed up to speak is Kayla Haswell Lee. Ms. Lee, are you, Haswell Lee, are you with us? Start out by giving us your name and address for the record and then let us know anything that wasn't previously shared you think we should know. My name is Kayla Haswell Lee. I live at 644 Southwest 164th Street, Oklahoma City. Um, so yeah, the last time I was here was 12 years ago in 2008 when a property directly adjacent to my five acres was uh, trying to get rezoned to put more than one house on five acres. And at that time, we got a unanimous agreement from all of the property owners out there that they were opposed to it. Um, that's it, consistent with where we are today, 12 years later. Uh, we did get it denied at the zoning, uh, at the Planning Commission at that time. Um, the, this um, plan, over-proposing plan, we have that all around. I see that that's consistent, as she said. We've got people, you know, acreages, five acres here, one acre plots within a couple of miles of us, city residential. But this specific uh, 80 acres basically is five acre tracks. There is two lots that are undeveloped, two five acre, 10 acres that's undeveloped there. And it's their five acres and the five acres that's adjoined them. Everybody else has houses on it. I will say, yes, there is, um, you know, other pieces there, but that commercial, that zone commercial stuff doesn't bump up to it, to my understanding. There's a strip of AA that goes to the last five acres, which is next door to my property. So that property accesses off of Western, and there is AA. So on all sides of them is the AA. So... I, you know, we were opposed to it 12 years ago. We're opposed to it now. Uh, I feel like it sets a precedent that other people that are platted in the five acres can come up next year or the year after and say, I want to, you know, I want my son to build there. I mean, that was what my aunt was trying to do 12 years ago. She wanted to give her son, you know, land to build on, which I would love for him to have built on there and to be living there next to me today. But if he did that, then, you know, the people behind me could have done that. I just think it sets a precedent. Uh, we were, you know, since, I don't know, forever, it's been five acres. And I'm not opposed to the city coming at all. I know changes are going to happen. But I feel like this is very inconsistent with what we have out there. Uh, and I feel like they have an opportunity to go somewhere in the very near vicinity and do what they want to do. And they have exactly came in in October to a known area that was plotted this way and want to come in and change the rules on us. Um, I guess, I mean, I just think it sets a bad precedent. We're against it still. And um, I appreciate your time today. Thank you. Well, we appreciate you being here. Thank you for taking uh -huh. the time to come down, especially under the circumstances. Okay, thank yeah. you. Thank you. Uh, that is the last person that I had signed up. Uh, is there anybody else that wants to be heard on this item? Um, just a couple of comments relating to some of the things that uh, our protest had said about the, the comp plan at this point. Um, what, what I'll say is um, uh, the, the, the first woman who spoke mentioned about the fire services uh, being rural response. You heard the planning director comment the nearest fire station 
uh, is at 134th and May Avenue, a little north of that. And it is very unlikely that the city would build another one because of how far south it is. All of these factors are, are um, uh, taken in totality. So we look at what, what can be done here longer term. If, it didn't, if, it did, if a lot of the things were outside the confines of the comp plan, it would create a stronger argument. And in, in those instances, I will tell you, staff more often than not will recommend denial. I was frankly surprised when I flipped through this in my packets to see that it was recommended for approval. I've gotten used to them being a recommendation to deny, frankly. Um, here it's recommended for approval, and as I said earlier, just looking at the comp plan piece, it, it's fairly straightforward. We can talk about the zoning component in just a moment, because there are some things I think there to talk about. But um, I'll also say, too, in looking at the comp plan, I'm looking at an aerial right now on my screen. Uh, do we, when was the uh, intersection there uh, redesigned, redeveloped? Do you know? I'm not sure. It's relatively new. Do you guys happen to know? Yeah. Okay. I'll just let the record reflect that Ms. Haswell Lee indicated that it was done in 2012 because the one person that's at home curious about this didn't, can't hear you, so I'm just relaying what you said. So 2012. So that's within the time frame that you, know, you were last here. So things change and evolve. The neighborhood to the east is evolving. It's an area that's going to see more growth. There's going to be more growth over here we're going to have to contend with and that you guys are going to have to contend with. Um, Commissioner Hinkle, do you have any other thoughts or do you have comments you want to make? No. Okay. Well, if, if not, I think, I think we're prepared for a, a motion on the comp plan amendment. I'm going to go with the city on this and, and move approval of the comp plan amendment. Okay. I have a motion. Do I have a second electronically or otherwise? We're just waiting, buffering. I have a motion and a second. Please cast your votes when available. Uh, and it is approved. Um, yes, it is approved. The uh, next item is item 40, which is the complimentary zoning application. David Box, 522 Colcord Drive, here on behalf of the applicants who are also all here with us, taking up residence in the back of the room. They've, they've brought their, uh, their children with them as well. So when they first uh, approached me, they had this idea for um, what they called an, an agra hood. Uh, Cindy, could you display the site plan? No, keep going if you don't mind. There you go. Um, as someone who grew up in the city, uh, I was not aware of what, what an agri hood was. But what they explained to me was it, it is a, a small community that, and these are growing in popularity across the country, where um, a handful of lots, uh, some, some instances, these are very large communities, have a central area where they grow crops together, uh, they could have livestock together, uh, and, and all of them kind of work towards a, a common goal of creating an environment where they are uh, utilizing the land uh, to sustain themselves. Um, we filed this application originally with four separate lots, um, each having a minimum lot size of 30,000 square feet. That generated a, a quite a bit of protest. Um, we did uh, have a, a neighborhood meeting via Zoom last week that was attended by a host of people, including uh, Commissioner Hinkle. At the end of the meeting, it became clear that the desire for four lots uh, was not something, no matter what we, we offered, uh, that the neighborhood could get behind. Um, I understood that. Um, my, my clients were very disappointed in that, but they, they understood the, the, the comments from the neighbors and, and why they felt that way. So we went back to the drawing board and, and I asked my clients, figure out a way to reduce the lots if you can. Um, and if you can, I suggest that we do that. So what we refiled was an SPUD that now limits the, the site to only two lots, each lot being a minimum of two and a half acres. Uh, it's worth pointing out, I do think that now this represents a, a very smooth transition from what the neighbors have to the east, that being at least five acre lots. As we move to the west, um, you'll go to ours, which will be two and a half acre. You'll notice a notch uh, out of the middle of uh, ours on, on western. That's a one acre lot that exists that we don't mm -hmm. own. So you'll transition from five acres or greater to two and a half acres to the one acre lot. And then as the, the director showed in the uh, presentation on the previous item, at some point you're gonna have a request for 6,000 square foot lots to the west. Um, Cindy, could you go to the, the aerial, please? 
And so if you look to the east of the, the neighbors, uh, that's significant density. Those are probably 6,000 square foot lots. If you look to the north, there's significant density. I understand that their, um, their one neighborhood does have larger lots. Um, our compromise with the two and a half acre lots was intended to be um, a, a transition from what they have to the inevitable uh, denser development to the west. Uh, and so with that, we think we've accomplished that. We think that um, the, the Gassons will be able to develop a home here. Another one of their family members will be developing the other home here. And they'll still be able to realize uh, a portion of their dream in, in having their, um, their, their agrihood. We think it's going to be a wonderful development that uh, over time, uh, I think the neighbors will, will grow to appreciate uh, and, and set a nice buffer on that, that, that western edge. The reality is what could happen along western at some point when sewer and water get there is that you'd have a request for something much more intense than uh, residential. You'd likely have a request for some form of commercial uh, along that stretch. In fact, the gentleman that owns the one acre notch uh, originally complained uh, about this because it impacts his ability to develop his one acre lot, he believes, for commercial. Uh, I would submit to you, if the neighbors are upset about two and a half acre lots, wait till that gentleman comes in with a one acre commercial development. Um, perhaps this would provide the nice buffer that the neighbors would need. So now that the comp plan has changed in your staff report, I do want to point out that there are no technical evaluations uh, and it is compliant with the comp plan being uh, two and a half acres in size. So with that, I'd be happy to answer any questions. Uh, if you have any specific questions about the agri hood and, and, and kind of what that really means, my, my clients would be happy to, to share with you their, their dream, their vision, and, and, and what they intend to do on this site. So are there any questions of me? I will ask. Commissioner Engel, this is your word. You want to lead us off? David, you guys, um, I know we talked a lot about it, but you're okay with screening the back and leaving as many trees as you possibly can? Yes, sir. Okay. Yeah, in fact, we, we, ex we increased our setback requirements when we went from four to two so that the intent would be to, to push those away to, to keep as many trees. So I'm real familiar with this site and from the road, you won't be able to see it because of that wooded acre that takes up there in the middle. And uh, I think with the screening along the back of it, it's going to hide itself from, uh, not that it needs to be hidden, but you're not even going to notice it there. So um, be interested to hear what the rest of the commissioners have to say. Yeah, well, I mean, you know, and, and sir, I will certainly give you all a chance to, to be heard again on the side of my pr I promise. Um, but, you know, going back to our discussion uh, at the comp plan amendment piece, if you, I'm looking at an aerial uh, of, the, of the whole area right now, zoomed out. I mean, you're, you don't have an interchange off of 35, but you've got very close proximity to I-35. Uh, you're very close proximity to Southmore High School. You're very pro close proximity to what is, uh, forgive me, it's not my area town, Oak, Oak Ridge Elementary School. Um, and there is a lot of dense residential development in the area. So this five acre area is kind of a, in a sense, it's sort of like a last bastion of, of what is that lot? Because to the west of that, you have a, it's a very large single track undeveloped that undoubtedly is gonna see development come. Uh, there's some land to the east that still hasn't developed, but two and a half acres does not seem offensive to me at all next to five acres. I, I just don't see how that creates uh, a density issue or a burden. I just don't see it. it, it to, to me, this is a very straightforward application. When it first came through, when I first got the application, before it was continued, it was 30,000 square foot lots. And that you know, was kind of a different discussion. There'd be a little bit of a different discussion, I think. But for two and a half acres next to five acres that's gonna abut Western Avenue, um, you know, I think there's a chance if water and sewer developed here, you see multifamily in this area. So um, I think this is a great way to buffer the five acres and, and allow, you know, a little bit more density, but something that's compatible. I, that's my take on it. I don't know if anybody else has different feelings, but nobody, nothing. Okay. Well, I'll ask um, if, if um, uh, Ms. McMahon or if uh, Ms. Hagley, if, if either one of you guys would like to come back up, we'd love to hear from you just to make sure you get your points across. And I'm so sorry, how did you pronounce your name? McMahon. McMahon, Julie I'm McMahon. so sorry. Do I need to give my address again? If you would, if you don't okay. mind. Julie McMahon, 7. 
Oklahoma City, Oklahoma, 73170. Um, may I ask, did everyone on this committee get a, a packet with my letter and my photographs that I sent in? There was uh, five photographs that I sent in of my property, and I invited all of you to come out to my property. Uh, we have a letter from you that is in our packet. My letter did not include photographs. The photographs came yesterday or the day before, oh, yeah, and I sent to Curtis. Yeah, yes, I apologize. We did. That's right. Okay. No, yes. Have you looked at those? Yes. Photographs? Okay. Uh, first of all, the, the acreage or the five acres in question is actually next to mine, which is seven and a half acres. So it's not five, bumped up, uh, up next to five acres. It's bumped up to seven and a half. Um, the, the concern that I have with this, and I don't have a problem with um, the layout that they want to have the cutting garden and the uh, and existing trees and things like that. Um, my concern is um, that it's going to, um, the placement of their homes, um, I'm trying to find maps here. The placement of their homes is going to be an issue for me because it will in inevitably uh, destroy my pond. Um, I don't know if that's important to you personally, but um, I don't have an issue with um, them planting the gardens and things like that. However, it does, it will significantly detract from my, um, my um, property value. Um, they've spoken about having modest houses, which is not in consistency with the, the neighborhood. Um, all of the homes in our estates are right next to it are at least 3,000 square foot and over. Um, that's a concern for us. Um, there's a possibility for some significant drainage issues as well as the, um, um, the uh, spray field for the aerobic system to be going directly into my pond. Um, uh, I, I'm, I'm just, um, I'm asking you to look at the USGS topographical map uh, for the drainage issues. They're asking for there to be um, a, a gray water system that will also involve tanks that go into the water, into the ground. Um, the, just the, um, the amount of soil work that will have to be done to implement this um, plan is going to be significant. And um, it will inevitably, um, I, I think I have explained all of this in my letter, it will significantly destroy uh, and decimate my property. So I guess that's really all I have to say. Well, we, we appreciate it. Any questions? No, thank you so much. Appreciate it again. Uh, Ms. Haswell, is there anything else you'd like to add to this part of the discussion? Yeah, uh, Kayla Haswell Lee, 644 Southwest 164th Street. Uh, again, you know, I feel like I just got rolled on that last one um, because this particular five acres is in just at, you know, it is one five acre track in 80 acres that is all single family dwellings on five plus acres. So what is to stop my other neighbors to come and say, well, guess what? I want to put, you know, two houses or three houses or five houses. Because if I read in this, the small, I mean, that's one of the questions I had was, how many houses can you really put in that low density, whatever you guys just approved? I think it's one per ha one acre, one house per one acre. Well, they're 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 asking for two houses in total. I know they are, yeah. but I think you just approved that land to get one house per one acre. No. Okay. Well, whatever, because I don't really understand the the loon, but I. That's okay. I, 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 you know, I what is to stop my neighbors? From Del coming and next to me, and and so where we have 16 houses today or 20 houses today, we're going to have 40. So let's let's address that just quickly, and okay. and, I'll, and I'll take a shot at it, and I'll see if any other commissioners want to want to chime in on anything. But but they'd have to go through the same process. Yes. Uh, and and one of the things that is weighs heavily on me, and these get really hard when you have somebody that protests it. To be candid with you, I think I'm doing you a service long term because I fear what may end up on the frontage of Western if it's not a two and a half acre housing development. I fear what may come 12 years from now that would actually impact you greater. And the more services that are there, the harder it is for us to objectively say that something isn't appropriate. So if this request were not along the frontage road of Western for the two and a half acres, it, it would, I would view it differently. I think that's fair. If, if they were asking for 30,000 square feet, it would be a different conversation. But I think what's coming across the street from you on Western is 6,000 square foot lots. 
And I think that's very likely. And I think you are likely to see, because of these great schools, I think you're likely to see multifamily. I think you're likely to see duplexes. And, and so when that density comes, one of the things that's really hard for us, at least for me when I look at these cases, is how do I take what exists and to the best of our ability, how do we maintain it but allow densification to continue? And when you get closer to what are primary arterials like Western, it makes a lot of sense to allow density. I'm, I am thrilled that it is two and a half acres that they're asking for and that we're not already facing a much denser request that would be very hard for me to objectively say, I can't support it. So I don't know if anybody else has additional comments on that, but yep. to, to go ahead. Okay, uh, Mr. Chair, thanks. Um, this is not questions for you. This is more um, in agreement with both, uh, both of them that have spoken. Uh, your comments, your letters have all uh, made a lot of sense to me. So um, against this application and, and some of this, I don't mean to go back and forth with Scott, but um, I do see other objective criteria why I would deny it even if it was more intense than two and a half acres to say if it was even more intense, it wouldn't have objective criteria, I would. This is not on the west side of Western. This is on the east side of Western. I don't think they have as much concern with what may be coming on the west side of Western. Sure, it may be intense, but it does not back up to Ms. McMahon's yard, her seven and a half acres. Um, to me, it, if, if two and a half acres is okay, well, it's a slippery slope, why not two? Well, why not three acres? Well, why not three and a half acres? Well, the best question to me is why not five acres? It is clearly within the lines of east of Western and south of 184. So there's a clear line. You made the comment, uh, Mr. Chair, that it was the last bastion. I agree, and there's clear lines right now of what is in there and what's not, and that is the last bastion. If we now go to two and a half acres, I, I actually agree with them. Well, then what will happen within their spot? And yes, they may be surrounded on the other side of these major roads by more density. At this time, I believe what they have in there is still what they have, and there is no need to start that slippery slope at this point. I, I just, I feel like um, it's, I, I'll, instead of repeating what they've said, um, what they've said, I agree with. Um, I, I think this is not the time to start that slippery slope. Um, I think that is all I had. Uh, yeah, that's all I had. Well, th those are, those are great comments, and it's the other side of my argument, which I appreciate you making. I mean, I think that's the other side of it. So people feel differently in how they view it, and that's you know why there's normally nine people up here, and today there are six. We all have different opinions. Uh, each commissioner's got to weigh it differently, um, but you know, I, I certainly understand why you know uh, Commissioner LaForge made the argument he did, but I I still feel like it 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 could be worse. I I, I think it would be different for me if this were internal. If this weren't along the frontage of, of, of Western there, I think I'd feel differently, um, minus that you know, commercial one acre carve out. But um, I don't know, does anybody else have comments on it or things they wanna share before we let the applicant? I, I don't know, I'm, I'm, I might be trying to simplify a little bit too much, but I have a question for Ms. Lee. How many square feet is your home? Um, about 24, 27 maybe. 2,700 square feet? Yeah. And Mr. Box, these two residential properties, that you're planning on building? Uh, in excess of 3,000 square feet. Each? Yeah. Okay. How, your, your house was how big? About 27. Thousand? 100. 100. 100. Okay. Really? Okay. Well, I, I, I... <laughs> that was ridiculous. Um, so, so, I mean, I... <laughs> yeah, I, I, I was, I was a school teacher. So, no, I don't have a 27,000 square foot home. I and, think, yeah. you know, <laughs> Yes, the, as he said, this is a very, it's a five acre tract and it, you know, it's only got a sliver of Western. It's because that one acre and whatever that gentleman does, that's, you know, what's gonna happen down the road, we have, we have to go there. But it's just a sliver of Western frontage. It's five acres and all of the rest of it up to the existing bigger lots. Uh, and I agree, things could get worse out there. And, you know, honestly, if this, goes and we want to do that, I, I really feel like you will see the rest of the five acre tracks. People will sell that. They'll sell off their last two and a half acres. Many of them are on the front or the back two acres. So everybody out there can go say, all right, I want two and a half acres. And, you know, they're on private roads. They're, you know, there's not city, there's not water. Uh, and, you know, we've been trying to get that stuff for years so but we struggled out there for years and t maintained it all ourselves i mean i've literally 
walked up and down 164th Street picking up trash. Yeah. So I, it's a bad precedent to set. Again, it's, uh, it remains the same. Like I said, I feel like I got rolled on that last one because it's kind of the same thing. Um, we oppose it in uh, if, uh, all of the homeowners, 100% of the homeowners out there do not want this. There is other land that she can go and buy and do what she wants to do in the general vicinity. And I'm not opposed to them personally or anything. It's, and there are people willing to buy that five acres and be super happy to build one house, maybe a 27,000 square foot house on it because it's five acres and you can't get that. And I think we want to keep it. And I really urge all of you, which I miss, did, I guess I didn't do enough a moment ago, but please do not approve this. Thank you, Miss. We appreciate it. Thank, Thank you for coming down. Uh, Commissioner Claire, I want to return. You were making some comments. I want to make sure you got a chance to make. Well, I was I was trying to kind of just gain with the new the new homes and the size of the lot. I mean, very the the lot size is similar to the existing homes. So and and the new home sizes are similar to the existing homes. They're just doing two on this one lot. So. Well, well, a great question. I don't. Think, it would not be limited to three thousand though. If they change their mind and build a lot bigger, or a future owner. This would only be two and a half acres. It could be 100% agree. Yeah, yeah. It could be as big as they want to build. Yeah, this is a right. this is the pretty picture we see on site plans. It, it, yeah. There's no commitment there, but at least to me, it, it was more interesting to know what the current residences were in terms of their size, what we were, you know. But at any rate, uh, any other questions or comments of commissioners before I let the applicant just respond before we make motion? All right, hearing that, I'll give you just a minute. I'm just going to respond briefly to uh, Commissioner LaForge. Uh, I don't see this as a slippery slope because the idea that somebody within the existing neighborhood could go chop that up, I, I think is just incorrect. This is different because it's not part of the neighborhood. It's on Western. It is disconnected from the neighborhood. So I do think it's a different analysis. That's why staff recommended approval of the comprehensive plan. And that's why there now are no technical evaluations because it, it is squarely within the comprehensive plan. Yeah, and I get that. I guess my vote against the comprehensive plan, maybe I'm now compelled to vote for it because it is consistent with the comprehensive plan, but I will vote against it even if um, the comprehensive plan maybe arguably um, it's now in compliance with it, but I still have reason to believe it is not consistent overall with what's appropriate. Okay. Any other comments? Okay. So at this point, we need to see where we are. Uh, we've got six people here today, so let's make a motion and see what happens. Um, Commissioner Hinkle, this is your ward. I'll let you take a stab at it if you'd like. I'll move approval. Uh, I have a uh, motion to recommend approval. Uh, hang on just a second. Let me switch back over uh, to city council. Do I have a second? I do have a second. So please cast your votes when available. And it is a motion to recommend approval. M motion fails to carry. So we can try to make a motion to deny. Uh, do you want to take a continuance? Uh, I'd ask that you just move it on without a recommendation. I mean, we, we continue this once already to allow the neighborhood meeting. Um, with COVID, there's no guarantees there's going to be uh, hell a meeting. Uh, in two weeks or, or six more people. Yeah, that's fair. So I can make a motion to deny, but I think it will fail because there's not enough people, but I can do that. Um, and then we will have both motions fail. Well, we don't. Happens. So yeah, let me, if I can, let me just uh, procedurally. Mm -hmm. So we, we can make a motion to deny. It, the vote is arguably going to fall the exact opposite of the way it just fell. Um, we can make a motion to continue the case for two weeks uh, to provide an opportunity for additional planning commission members to join us or we could attempt which would i think you know we've done this in the past and there's arguments to, for and against it which I, I can i can make but we could make a recommendation uh to send this along with, or i'm sorry we could send this on to city council without a recommendation so it's just not lingering with us we, we have two planning commissioners out uh, now um, that uh, are uh, not necessarily going to be back by the next meeting. So I do think it is something that we should at least consider and discuss as a group because by continuing it two weeks, it may get continued again. It's already been continued. Um, so I don't know where everybody stands. I definitely want feedback on how everybody feels. So my question, if I make a motion to deny and it fails, then what happens? What, what happens if we do nothing further? We, it, well, it would essentially be continued, right? But it would be continued 
I believe in the, the default would be, be continued indefinitely. Is that right? No, it would be continued for to, to the next meeting. So if we're going to do that, we might as well just continue it, you right. know. Um, if we want to go through that step just to say that we, we have it on the record, please go ahead. But I, um, so we either need a motion to continue it two weeks or we need a motion to send it along the Planning Commission without a recommendation. That would also need five votes uh, in order to do that. So. I, I think you should have an opportunity. You are the applicant. What is your... So we'll, we'll take the two weeks. You'll take the two weeks it, to it, January 28th? That's fine. Okay. What I would say to this is that in two weeks, if we're back here with a limited number of planning commissioners again, I think we need to seriously visit then at that point about trying to send it along without a recommendation. There's an element of fairness there at some point. But if you'll, if you'll take that, I will take the motion at this point on the recommendation for a continuance. I have a motion and a second. Um, please cast your votes when available. Commissioner Cravens, yep. is there not a, well, you've seen it before, a trigger somewhere where if you have 100% um, surrounding neighborhood petitioning against something, isn't that something that can go to the council? Didn't that just happen on the it's only a city council, and it's it's a hundred. It's more than fifty percent within three hundred feet, and I don't think we have that. I understand we have hundred percent of the neighborhood. That's not what matters. It's fifty percent, or more than fifty percent of the owners of property within the three hundred foot radius, which I do not think has been triggered. Uh, we have votes cast. I'm so sorry. Just a minute. We're at this point. I've got a motion and a second on the floor to continue that, and we need to get through it. And I'll come back to you. Okay. So I have a motion and a second. Please cast your votes if you haven't already. Uh, so the continuance uh, is granted to January the 28th. So we've, we've continued the item. Um, do you want to provide comments, Ms. Randall, on the question that Commissioner Hinkle was just asking about? No, I think David answered it. Okay, right? do you want to answer that again? Just because. It has to do with the majority. When you get to council, you have to have a super majority vote. Got it. Does that answer your question? Commissioner Hinkle, does that answer yeah. your question? Okay. So, uh, if you have a question at this point, we're done with the item, but I'm happy to entertain it just as a courtesy. So I didn't get a chance to speak before you did that. So I, I was just going to say to you that uh, Leo Din, who is actually the own, owner of the one acre track that is in front of them, has been contacted and he is one of the people who signed the petition against. So there is 100% within 300 feet uh, opposition towards this. And that item, that issue, and that's kind of what I thought you were, that item is not before us. That issue is not before us. So we've continued it. Uh, that's not something that we would consider. It's, we, we've continued it to the 28th. Hopefully we'll have more commissioners here where we can at least send on to Planning Commission, which is all we're doing, or to City Council, a recommendation, which is all we're doing here at Planning Commission, is a recommendation. We didn't have the votes necessary to do it one way or the other. So we've got to continue in hopes that when our other three members rejoin us, which I hope is January 28th, we can do that to let the City Council know our opinion based on the comp plan and the other zoning issues we can consider. Well, Mr. Chair, because I may be as confused as she is, uh, to Commissioner Hinkle's question, what is the relevance of if greater than 50% of the people within, what's the relevance of that? Because nothing, I think it probably is more than none to Nothing to Planning Commission. It requires a supermajority at City Council. It has no relevance whatsoever to your d vote. Correct. Okay, because I, I, you might double check your point if you don't think it has 50% of the people within 300 feet because it... So staff, As I'm looking at the map, I bet it does. Staff so. compiles that, but if, if you consider the 300 foot, Cindy, could you put the, put the site map up? If you can, there you go. If you consider the 300 feet, it's going to capture the stuff to the north of us, the stuff across Western. And so, yes, everyone in the neighborhood, but the problem is there may only be one person in the neighborhood that's within 300 feet. I don't know what the lot width of that seven and a half acre tract is. There could be 10 million people in the protest letter. If they're not within the 300 foot bubble that staff. I get it, but because on the west, that's one big owner, that's one. And then on the east, there's a bunch, and it may not reach the Oklahoma Baptist Children's home up north. That may be one owner. So if you count these up, there may be about 14 owners within 300 feet, and it may be about 10 out of 14. So I, it's, if it's not relevant to us, that's fine. I just, you're, you said you didn't think so. Uh, I don't think you didn't say it didn't have. 50% or more, but it, my, my point is, I don't care. it may, it may, right? <laughs> I mean, it is what it is. That, that is a staff job. That's not me. Uh, they're going to calculate it. I didn't want your comment that it didn't to be read as if you really meant that it didn't, because that may be incorrect. Uh, perhaps it is. Perhaps it's not. Perhaps it's incorrect that it does. Right. 
we, we, we've settled the item. We're on to the next item. It's item uh, 41, uh, CPA 2020-2009. Okay, this is a consideration of a proposed map amendment to the conference of plan, removing the employment land use topology area over the urban low intensity uh, LUDA on approximately 140 acres in an area located near the southwest corner of East Hefner Road and North Kelly Avenue. And we have a presentation here that I will again do. Um, so here's a, there's a, a piece that the uh, applicant does not uh, own or control, and that's the kind of the notch on the northwest or the northeast portion of this. But the remainder of it uh, is proposed for amendment. Uh, next slide, please. Here's the zoning uh, surrounded by R1 with a little bit of AA across the street to the north. And the, uh, the existing land use, uh, there are some developed large lot, um, there's a golf course to the north, large lot uh, uh, residential development to the south, west, and east. Here's the uh, location of the subject site in the uh, far northeast of the city. And the existing LUTA map, the employment designation is what's currently uh, on the site right now. Um, and uh, if there's one LUTA designation that Mr. Box uh, likes better than um, the, uh, well, that he likes most, I believe it's this one. Um, but this is uh, something that we have looked at for a, long, for a long time. Back in 2012, as it says there on the screen, uh, we looked at it, we did an employment lands needs assessment and action plan. And if we go back actually to the, to the map, there we go, thank you. And maybe actually the one before that. So the, the commission and the, the audience can see that there are several areas located around the city that are uh, employment and uh, they're the, the blue striped, diagonal striped. And what this study did is it, it was uh, intended to be uh, an economic development tool for the city where we would designate, designate sites that were appropriate for large uh, employment uses for companies to grow and remain in the city or to attract new companies. And we tried to get them in areas of the city that were kind of spread around, so uh, sites in East Quadrant that were large undeveloped sites. And the, the definition was roughly 20 acres or above, uh, 20 acres uh, would be kind of a minimum uh, because they're really looking for large sites. Uh, so that by way of background, um, and the city has uh, done some movement and uh, just for the information of the commission, there is a site in the southeast, that square mile on I-240. The city uh, is in the process uh, with, with the help of the Alliance uh, in purchasing that. Um, however, we do not yet have any, any arrangements, uh, any similar arrangements for other properties in the Northeast Quadrant or elsewhere. Uh, so if you could uh, go to the next couple slides, that would be, yeah, one more. And we'll go ahead and, yeah, thank you. So the, the considerations uh, to, for, for the request, uh, this site is served by utilities. It's, it's, it's well served by all city services, including fire and emergency services. Um, the, the issue is that, uh, and this, this is already zoned R1 as was, uh, as was shown, and that's a little bit unusual. Most of the employment land in the city, you know, we, we, we looked at zoning and we tried to identify areas that were not already zoned uh, R1, so most of, the, most of it was zoned AA, but there is some, including this one, which is zoned um, uh, R1. Um, and the reason that it's attractive for R1 is the same reason it's attractive for employment use. It's right next to a, a really good transportation access. It's got all the services, and it's a large site uh, that would be uh, well suited. And in addition, it's, uh, it's close by other large employers, so it's got uh, that, that synergy. Um, so uh, there is a lot of single family housing, uh, opportunities we feel in the, in the Northeast Quadrant, but a limited supply of this uh, land that I've described, these large acreages. Um, and with that, I believe that's, uh, is there one more? One more, we recommend uh, denial of the application for the reasons uh, that I stated, and we're happy to answer any questions. Thank you, uh, Mr. Butler. Um, I, I don't 
have, have any questions in particular? Do commissioners have questions of staff on this before I let the applicant speak on a little bit? No? Okay. Mr. Box, do you have comments you want to make on this uh, one? So, David Box, 522 Concord Drive. Um, you know, it is a tough choice between the uh, urban reserve and the employment reserve, but if I had to pick, I think this certainly would be my favorite. Um, I think this particular application, um, I, I think, highlights the problem with, with the employment reserve in that it's already zoned single family. Um, so the current zoning on the site, in theory, is um, contradictory to the comprehensive plan. Um, it's zoned single family. It could be developed as single family now. Our, our application is nothing more than a modified single family application. The problem with the site uh, and why I think it is suited for a single family development and not for um, a large scale employment development is that the, the site is a difficult site to develop. Um, if you look at our, uh, what is the proposed plat, you will see giant swaths of, of common area. Uh, and the reason that is the case is because there are creeks and drainage areas uh, and floodplain uh, throughout the subject site. And so for all of those reasons, we believe that single family development, which is what is currently zoned now, is a better use for the property than a large scale employer. Um, you know, the AA that exists to the north is not likely to be AA much longer. Uh, it's a golf course that no longer is a golf course. Um, so single family development, I think, is compatible with the area. You have some more dense single family development at the northeast corner of Hefner and Kelly. Um, and so we've got full city services. Um, so unfortunately, we have to uh, part ways with our um, director on this one uh, and, and would ask that you uh, approve our, our application to change the comp plan to urban low. Uh, which would not only comply with the current zoning of the site that the landowner enjoys, uh, but also with the application that is coming before you on the next item. And I'd be happy to answer any questions. Uh, Mr. Box, I have two. How long has your client owned this property? Well, my client has it under contract. Okay. How long has the previous owner, how long has the current owner owned this property? Quite some time. Years and years and years. And how long has it been zoned R1? Uh, presumably since it was brought into the city. Any idea what year that would be, or I don't. More than uh, forty. Yeah, it's a, at that way back in the day. It was a common practice to bring in things as R one when they were. Got it annexed. when they were annexed. Yeah, got it. So it's presumably been zoned residential for a really long time. I mean, longer just, than anybody in this room has been alive. Okay. Um, any other questions for the applicant? All right. So I again, I have a couple people signed up to speak on this one. Really focused on the comp plan amendment at this point. Uh, there's going to be an opportunity to be heard on the zoning, and uh, there's also an accompanying plat, I believe, in this application. But I do want to provide an opportunity for people to speak and be heard. Uh, so at this point, I will call. Um, first person I've signed up to speak is, I can make out the first name, Ralph, and I apologize, I can't read the handwriting on the second part. Ratliff? Mr. Ratliff? Okay. Um, uh, looks like the second person I've signed up to speak is DE. I also cannot read the handwriting. I'm so sorry. Help me out. Sorry. Help me out with that last name. So I... it's, it's Brower. Brower. Got it. Got it. Okay. DE, DE Brower, 501 Northwest 13th Street. Thank you, Mr. Brower. Tell us uh, what you want us to know about this application. I'm, uh, I'm mainly uh, concerned about the housing addition and uh, uh, the different aspects of that. Uh, as far as your decision on this, I would probably uh, uh, ask the planning commission to make their own decision and we have no position on whether it's a housing addition or commercial or what. Got it. I will, but, I will certainly ask if you'd like to come back up too when we do yes. the other, so don't, don't, don't sweat that. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, that's the only two people I had signed up to speak. Is there anyone else that wants to be heard on this item? Okay. Uh, commissioners, comments? Somebody, anybody? <laughs> I will implore my fellow commissioners to say something too because I'm a little torn between uh, Mr. Box, who makes good points on the staff. So, anybody, any of you guys? Well, I, so I guess my question to maybe staff is so, what happens? What if we remove something that's been designated as employment reserve, what I understand the importance of, of needing to kind of uh, earmark those potential sites. Um, 
but if we remove, say, 20 acres, does that trigger anything? Are you going to try, is there, is there ways to mitigate that? Uh, if we move, remove 20 acres, or are you referring to the? Or X amount of acres. Oh, okay, if, if just we, this, this yeah, project, yeah. This, yeah. Um, what we intend to do is, you know, over time we'll update. Uh, the, the reason that the, when, when we did the study, you know, if we were to look at the map again, you'd see that the, all these employment areas are, for the most part, on the, not quite the fringe, but in the, in, you know, in the, in the new, newer suburban areas of the city. Um, and so the, the, the idea was, hey, let's, let's try and, and keep these, uh, uh, retain them and use them for employment so that, you know, people can have uh, more, a better access to employment because what tends to happen is if, if you don't uh, kind of reserve and have a, an integration of land uses in, in the city, these large employers, when they come, they'll locate out in the rural areas, uh, you know, which, you know, there, there's cheaper land there, but, but it's hard to get services. And what, what they are, when, the, when they come to the chamber, when they come to the city, they're, they're in a hurry. Uh, they, want, they want served land and they want it now. And they've got a lot of jobs to offer. And so uh, it, it's been on the city's mind and the chamber's mind for years now to try and remedy this situation. And you know, this, is, this was part of the remedy to designate these as employment. Obviously it's not you know, the, the whole nine yards. And I mentioned the site, site in the southeast that, we've, that we're acquiring. Uh, but there's, you know, that's, that's just one site. So, you know, what, what we would do if this or any other piece is, uh, is taken out, you know, we would try and identify other pieces in the future that we could, that we could then serve, but they're gonna be farther out, farther from residences, farther from services. So, you know, it's, it's, it's not an ideal situation. It's, it's a balancing act. So, um, Commissioner Clare, I don't recall. There was a case um, in Ward 8 uh, that was, I, I think it's been a couple of years ago now, I don't remember if you were on the commission yet or not, where we had this discussion. And in that particular instance, the employment reserve piece, which it was a similarly sized tract to this, in fact, um, was, I don't believe it was, uh, I don't believe, I think you represented the applicant and I don't believe it was zoned residentially, but everything else around it was zoned residentially. And we had this discussion because it was designated as employment reserve. And it, at that point, you know, um, my feelings were strong on two fronts. Um, one was the, the, the fact that we had a person in front of us who intended to make use out of the acreage and wanted to build it and it was perfectly compatible. And there wasn't a zoning tool in the world you could point to to say that it wasn't. The other was, We've had this conversation about comp plan amendments before, and I'm always bothered by them because there's no notice on them. There's not only no notice to the public about hearings on comp plan amendments, but there's no notice to the property owner that their property may have been designated employment reserve, okay? And so they, in that instance, assumed that we hadn't zoned that residentially and we'd upheld the employment reserve and then five years later or 10 years later or whenever it would have occurred, somebody would have come along and sought to rezone that property for some really intensive commercial use that would have occupied that 80 acres. This whole chamber, maybe not during COVID times, would have been full of people in opposition to that rezoning, almost certainly, right? And we see that stuff all the time. And there's no there was there was no notice for that, right? They don't know that the, that the comp plan amendment has this place designated for an 80 acre employment center. Um, in this instance, I'm even more bothered, and I, and I know that I'm the broken record on this front, which is you know why I was trying to like let other opinions come up first. It, this this is an R1 zoned property. They can build residential here now. And the only reason they're here, ultimately, is because they're trying to get in the next item, 4,800 square foot lots instead of 6,000 square foot lots, which we encourage because, and as a general rule, because it improves the density of development and we think that's good. We've generally held that to be good in most instances when we're talking about new development. We wanna get as many people as we can to share services and all that kind of stuff. I don't see how you could look at this and not be bothered by the fact that it is currently zoned for residential property, and yet we might deny a comp plan amendment to remove a layer 
that really doesn't have anything to do with it anyway because we could still approve the zoning application just so we're clear. But that flies in the face of what the existing zoning is. Like you're depriving, in my view, the property owner, the current property owner of the right to essentially sell it and monetize it for residential development. I, I, can't, ever, I'm, I can't ever get behind that. I, I understand why the chamber wants this. I'm a, I'm a chamber supporter, as I'm sure everybody else is. We all support business, small business. We want the community to grow in that regard. But selecting sites arbitrarily, designating them without a property owner's approval, and then holding them accountable to that for the, for the future it is a very dangerous precedent to take, in my opinion. I just can't support and, that. And thank you for that. Let me clarify. Did I miss it earlier? The property owner owned this before the employment reserve was placed on it? Correct. It's, yeah, I agree with your last statement then a moment ago, yeah. Yeah, no, I mean, I'm, if, if this is so critical, like I understand the importance of having these employment areas, but if that's so critical, then critical, the chamber needs to be purchasing these properties. Or the city, which or the city. to Mr. Butler's point, they just did that. They did that on yeah. 240, yeah, uh, so. Agreed, that's right. And I was gonna ask you if Commissioner Pennington had passed on his thoughts, because I was con concerned about the employment reserve, all those things, but. Yeah, yeah, no, I apologize. I, I did speak to Commissioner yep. Pennington about it, and he did not have concerns on the item and was supportive of the item generally. Okay, then those last two by you guys, um, yeah, that's why I would agree. And I hate not following the staff's recommendation on two of these today now, I guess, but... Um, well, th no, I mean, look, I, I understand, again, why the planning department and why the chamber tried to come together and designate these sites and encourage it, and I, and I totally get that. And I think by doing that, it would give us something to work with should somebody come up and want to redevelop a property that's commercial then we're going to have a really interesting discussion to have right as a planning commission with members of the public it had been designated that way now there's a user who wants to come in and for all we know they're across from a neighborhood and are we prepared to take that step you know to allow major kind of you know intensive commercial development near an established residential area that that is an argument hopefully we, we have i get why the tool was put in place but once you have an applicant standing here asking to utilize their property for the way that it is zoned today, it's really, really dangerous to say, no, nah, we're gonna adhere to this. That, that's a, I mean, I'm not gonna go so, I'm not gonna use the, the condemnation word, but it, it bothers me to, in that same vein. It, it feels like we're saying, oh no, you can't use it for this, you can only use it for that. Well, that's not the way that works. You want it, go buy it. So, I, that, you know. I don't know. Anybody else feel differently or want to articulate comments? I think we need to take a motion on the Copland Amendment and move forward. If not, I'll take the motion. I'll make a motion to approve the proposed map amendment. I have a motion and hopefully an electronic second. Buffering. Oh. Are you going to bring it back up or we need a voice vote? Oh, we got it now. Okay. I have a motion and a second to recommend approval of the comp plan amendment. Please cast your votes. And that uh, the amendment is approved unanimously. Thank you. Item 42. Item 42 is case PUD 1801, an associated application to rezone 500 East Hefner Road from R1 to PUD 1801. Uh, once again, David Box, 522 Call Core Drive. Uh, on behalf of the applicant, also with me is Brad Reed, the civil engineer for the project. Um, you know, as I, I showed you in the, the previous item, so the site zoned R1 now, we're seeking to rezone it through the PUD that would allow for a modified residential development to make some of the lots small. Uh, we are gonna have to require uh, this site to preserve a significant amount uh, of common area, which we think could uh, with walking trails and such through the common areas because of the drainage channels. These are existing creeks that come through here. So we're gonna retain those, keep those in their natural state, allow them to be an amenity for the neighborhood and uh, what we'd ask to do is through the PUD, reduce down the, the minimum lot size uh, that would be required in, in R1. Um, in the, the TEs, um, I find myself in the first time agreeing to the retention of the upland forest. Uh, so we do agree to TE1. 
a big step. First time for everything. That's right. So we will retain the upland forest. Um, so TE2, um, we don't agree to, but I think we agree to what staff's asking us to do. We do have a stub uh, to the south. Uh, staff has asked us to provide a southern connection to Lincoln. So Lincoln's actually way down here, and it's on the, the far west side of the property line. My guess is that staff is just wanting to us, wanting to ensure that we have connection to the south. We do stub to the south. I will tell you it's unlikely it gets developed. That's a, one of the large, uh, several hundred foot tall uh, TV antennas. But we provide that to the south. I don't know that Lincoln specifically was critical. Again, if we did Lincoln, it's all the way down the western side of the property creates, frankly, some awkwardness with how the lots would be designed. But I think the intent is to have the connectivity which we provide through the stub. Um, three, provide connectivity between the PUD and the out parcel to the northeast that is not a part of the PUD. Uh, we agree to that, but I wanna make sure we, it's limited to the pedestrian uh, connectivity and not vehicular connectivity. Um, we think the vehicular connectivity with back of house commercial is potentially problematic, but we do want the ability to have, uh, we do agree with the ability to have the pedestrian connectivity. And on four, mitigate compatibility lot sizes. We don't agree with that either. Uh, we have been in contact with representatives for the folks that live in uh, this neighborhood, as well as the individual that owns uh, the parcel to our west. We've agreed to some fencing measures and some access measures, and, and they are not in opposition to this, so I don't believe there's anything to mitigate. Um, the individual that owns this carve out right here, we've agreed to some buffers, uh, a 50 foot buffer that's already reflected on this plat on the east a 10 foot buffer on the north, a 10 foot buffer on the west, and uh, construction of some fencing uh, where it is adjacent to this uh, person's home. So we would ask to delete TE4. So agree to TE1, modify TE2, I guess to just say provide a southern connection, which we do, and modify TE3 to say provide a pedestrian connectivity between the PUD and the out parcel to the All northeast. All right, real quick, just for the sake of clarity, can we get uh, staff's comments on the intent of TE2? So we understand whether the intent was to provide a connection to Lincoln Boulevard or was the intent to provide a southern connection? Somebody, anybody? Provide a southern connection to North Lincoln Boulevard. What's question? TE2 in our staff report says, provide a southern connection to North Lincoln Boulevard. The applicant is offering to provide a southern connection, but not to Lincoln Boulevard. Is it staff's intent to require the connection to Lincoln or just a connection to the south? I think the southern connection they show is fine. Lincoln would be nice, but they don't actually abut the Lincoln right of way. Okay. But for 25 feet of it. So they would have to retain it, get a, some kind of an easement to get to it. Most of the right of way exists west of our western line for Lincoln. Is there a connection to the... I can't tell if this connection that you show... Yeah, from, from the uh, previous map, if you could go back, Cindy, the... Yeah, the previous one, sorry. Yeah, that's one where it appears that, you know, the, their southwest boundary touches Lincoln Boulevard. Oh, I see. Is the right of way there? The street is not there. The street's right not of there, way but the right there. of way, yeah. But so the it, problem with the connect, we can't provide a connection to Lincoln because I think 75% of the Lincoln right of way, if you extended it north, would be on the property owner to the west. So, so there's no right of way north, that, like into this into this tract that's being rezoned. There's no right of way. Correct. Is that correct? Yeah, it's just, it was just a, the, the intent was if Lincoln were ever to be built, it, it would be good to have a connection from this subdivision to Lincoln so that the residents could just I totally agree. Lincoln. I totally agree. And so whether uh, it would. Well, is there a connection to 102nd there? It looks like it on your plat, the, the sample plat, which I know we're considering next, but is there a connection to the west? No. If you look at the, Cindy, if you could go to the aerial one more time, I'm sorry. So it's, well. I don't know if you can zoom in. So this one's perhaps better. So it stops, uh, I'm gonna call it 100 or more feet um, from the edge of our property. The, the so there's pavement. a stub, but it doesn't go over and connect. It's not even, I mean, it's not a built stub. 
the, the pavement stops a couple hundred feet west of our property line. Right, but I'm saying you're showing a stub on your... We're showing a stub, yeah. So your intent is to provide the stub so that at least at some point in the future, it's at least conceivable there could be a connection. So we're going to provide a stub to the west. It will be through a crash gate, but there will be a stub. But that we'll deal with that on the plot. Got it. Okay. All right. Um, any other questions for the applicant on this? I know this is Commissioner Pennington's word. We just talked about it. I do want to ask the folks that joined us today if uh, they, they want to be heard again, but... Nobody? Okay. Uh, did Mr. Ratliff ever come back or is he gone, gone? I'm 100% sure you are not Mr. Ratliff. I'm not. Mr. Brad Reed, the craft uh, He, I was outside earlier. He, he, he talked to me. Um, he had some concerns with uh, he has large acreage. He wants uh, some, um, the ability to have some cows and things like that. Uh, we've agreed to some fencing. Um, and he wanted to make sure that we didn't connect to Lindsay Avenue. Uh, which we're not showing. Uh, it actually stubs into an adjacent property, kind of similar to what we're kind of discussing about Li uh, Lincoln. Um, we're not showing a connection on Lindsay. Those are his two concerns. I gave him my card and he said he was fine. So um, just wanted to relay that message. We have, he left because I spoke with him, so. Got it. You are now legally liable if anything you said is not true. <laughs> uh, Mr. Brower, do you have anything else you want to share with us, sir? E. e. Brower, 501 Northwest 13th. Thank you very much. I own 22 acres to the east of this property. Um, and there's three other neighbors. There, this property that we own there is about 40 acres. And I told them that I would speak for them also. Uh, our property was platted back in like the 1930s. And so the lots that are designated there, you can't even put a house on it. So the, the first thing that we were interested in is what kind of barrier was gonna put along Kelly in front of all of our property. There's four property owners. In other words, um, I, I haven't seen the plat, uh, this one anyway. And Mr. Brower, if you would, if you'll move back over to the mic, he'll, I think he's willing to hold it for you if you want to point to some things. I just want to make sure we get your comments on the microphone. Thank you. So my property, I have some right here, right directly across from the, where they're going to have the entrance. And then I have my property wraps around. And then I have property right here that's on the other entrance. And then there's th uh, four other landowners right in here. Each has five to 10 acres. And so what we're concerned about, if you're familiar with that area, this on the, on the east side of Kelly is high ground. On the west side of Kelly, it's like a big valley. And there's not very many trees till you get over to the northwest. But what we're concerned about are the houses along Kelly here and uh, the, the uh, driveways, they'll, they'll be able to see over into the valley without any kind of uh, screening or trees uh, planted, and I'm not sure what the uh, applicant is, is planning to do as far as a barrier there. We will ask but, him to comment on that. But that's our main concern. Got it. Um, the second concern is the density and the size of the lots, um, which I think the staff is also concerned. And then, um, the, like I said, the two entrances, we sent a letter over to the commission yesterday. I don't know if you've gotten it, but that, that also states basically what I'm saying now about our concerns of, uh, I mean, we're probably just like everybody, we're concerned about our property values and we're concerned about the usability of the property the way it is now. Understood. And so that's what we, that's what we uh, want the commission to take into consideration. Okay, thank you, Mr. Brown. Thank we you. appreciate you being here, especially under the circumstances. Thank you. Um, Mr. Box, if you would, would you, can you tell us or can Mr. Reed tell us what the uh, site proof screening plan is for the lots? I'm assuming there'll be a fence. There'll be a fence uh, and then right away that'll be planted pursuant to the city's, you know, landscaping ordinance uh, and meeting all um, the points that are required to be met. Assuming Mr. Brower didn't make the time to read the city's landscaping ordinance in advance of his trip down, could you or someone from staff enlighten him on what that will require? So I'll defer to staff on the specifics uh, as to points. Somebody, anybody? Or Brad, perhaps Mr. Reed. 
I bet Mr. Reed knows them. I can talk about it a little bit. Uh, our landscape architect usually handles these, but there's a requirement per um, the distance of frontage that you have. Um, it's, you know, it's, there's a, some ways to do it, but um, it's with, with shrubs, with trees, with, um, you know, ground coverings. Um, it's, you know, five points per foot or something like that. Right. Um, so required to have, you know, it'll be a... Um, and then entrance signage with, uh, you know, plantings, things like that. And then, you know, every, you know, 30 feet or whatever it is, depending on the type of tree we decide to, to use, um, there'll be a, a shrub or a tree uh, along Kelly. So, Got it. So you're going to have some landscape plantings is essentially what I can tell you, Mr. Brower, and a six foot privacy fence is probably going to be wood, cedar, you know, treated, something like that. That's what you're looking at. Does that answer your question? Does that help you? Okay. Thank you very much, Mr. Reed. Um, I don't have anybody else signed up to speak. I just want to ask because we are hearing from folks in the public if there's anybody else that wants to be heard on PUD 1801. Uh, if not, I'll ask my fellow commissioners for comments, if there are any. I just want to make sure that I understood when, you're, when you were talking about striking TE4, which included a 50-foot green belt um, it sounds to me like you're providing, you'd, if I misunderstood, please let me know, but you're providing a 50 foot green belt along that, yeah, that area there, but you're not doing so over on the west side? Correct. So we've worked in agreement with the folks that live in this neighborhood or represented by council and the individual that owns this who's also represented by council. Okay. So we've got fencing with certain spe uh, specifications about the metal posts and the concrete pads um the type of fencing and then the the access okay. issue that we'll address in the plot okay any other questions for the applicant or otherwise discussion if there's no more discussion it's motion time and I, I, or perhaps the chairman said i did speak with kamal and kamal uh, is supportive of the application yeah if i didn't say that i i i think well no i did say that at the you may have if I, part, okay. yeah uh commissioner penning was generally supportive of the application i won't make any comments for him other than that so Somebody wants to take a stab at the uh, motion, that would be wonderful. Uh, I'll take a run at it. Um, I'll motion to approve PUD 1801 with the following amendments to the technical evaluations. Technical evaluation two, amend to provide a southern stub to potentially connect to North Lincoln Boulevard. And, uh, and uh, technical evaluation three, provide pedestrian connectivity between the PUD and the out parcel to the northeast of the PUD and strike TE4. Okay, I have a motion. Do I have a second? And I do have a second. So please cast your votes when available. And that application is approved. Thank you. thank you very much. Good luck, Mr. Reed. Mr. Brown, thank you for coming down and joining us today. Next item is item 43, which is the plat. This is case uh, C7264, preliminary plat of Hefner Crossing, located south of East Hefner Road and west of North Kelly Avenue. One last time, David Box, 522 Colcord Drive. Um, Brad, Wee, Brad Reed with Craft & Toll is here with me. Uh, this is the plat uh, with the, uh, associated with the item you just recommended for approval. Uh, I will note that we agree with all of the TEs, but I do want to, I do want to uh, read into the record what we would like TE5 uh, to read instead. Uh, the inclusion of the word uh, across creeks uh, is concerning on a piece of it. This is similar to what we did across Mustang Creek recently, so I'll just read for the purpose of the record how we'd like it to read. Sidewalks shall be required along all streets within the PUD. Five-foot sidewalks shall be constructed along the arterial street, or six-foot sidewalks shall be required if the sidewalk is constructed adjacent to the curb, subject to the policies and procedures of the Public Works Department. Due to the feasibility of construction, a fee in lieu shall be allowed for the portions along the arterial crossings of Britton Creek. And you provided you provided that language to staff in advance, I hope? Uh, I don't think I have. Okay. Any disagreement or concern over that language from staff? Okay, Mr. Butler indicates there is not a concern. 
Try to select a commentator. Uh, Mr. Chambliss, no concerns from your side? No, that will work to get the fee, but there would be no sidewalk across connecting along the arterial, which is at the ordinance requirement. Connecting across the arterial. So, Fred, so, the craft and toll. Um, this is something similar we had to Mustang Creek on uh, uh, Creekside Village Platte. Um, as you can see up in that northwest corner, the area that we agreed to um, keep the upland forest, there's a large floodplain through there. There's a very narrow bridge um, that crosses right there. Uh, so the arterial doesn't have any ability to have a uh, sidewalk even be constructed. Uh, so if we're required to build a sidewalk there, we'd basically have to build a bridge as well. Uh, so the feasibility of that is, is not there. Uh, we have no problem with paying our fair share. Uh, and if that, you know, is widened and the city puts something in there, uh, we, we agree that we, can, we should do that, but uh, we just, we physically can't make that connection. So we wanted to kind of have that documented. Got it. It seems very reasonable to me. I don't know how other commissioners feel. Commissioner Clare? Um, because right now, you know, that would exclude them from, um, it could, in my mind, exclude them from building sidewalks uh, within the development where they have roadways crossing, you know, corridors. Um, Britton Creek is, is that specific one in the corner. Okay. Um, so all the other tributaries for that are different. Britton Creek is a named creek and it's up in that corner. Which is, and, and that was a part of the, the TE language that he recommended be read into the record. Okay. And now that Commissioner Clark's clear, would you do me a favor and just read it one more time? Yeah, yeah, sure. Uh, sidewalk shall be required along all streets within the PUD. Five foot sidewalk shall be constructed along the arterial street or six foot sidewalk shall be required if the sidewalk is constructed adjacent to the curb, subject to the policies and procedures of the Public Works Department. Due to the feasibility of construction, a fee in lieu shall be allowed for the portions along the arterial crossing of Britton Creek. Creek. Yeah. So it is specific to the arterial of Britton Creek. So they're committing to the sidewalks the way I'm understanding that comment throughout, with the exception of this one portion, which the feasibility is in doubt. Mm -hmm. Does that help? Are you more comfortable yeah. with that? Yeah. Yes, I am. Any other concerns over that or uh, consternation over that language? Okay. No. Okay. Um, Mr. Brower, you're still here. You want to talk about it? Come on down. D.E. Brower, 501 Northwest 13th. I, I have a question. Uh, as far as the entrances on Kelly, are they across the street from streets that are already designated on the east side, or are they, are they not? Um, is there an aerial that might show us and Mr. Brower how those proposed entrances interact with? No, they're not, but it, it seems like they should be. Uh, entrances where we've already got designated streets on the other side, on the east side. Are there designated streets there? Yes, sir. Side of ways that are, like, as you mentioned, it was planted a long time ago in the 30s or so? Well, they have one has a street sign, the others uh, are gravel driveways. Got it. To people's homes. Uh, the other thing is because, I mean, they're widening Kelly to four lanes right now. Um, we're concerned about the traffic. I mean, we knew there's going to be more traffic with the four lane, but then because of the size of the lots, there's going to be the minimum size, there's going to be more traffic because of that. So, um, we don't think, we think the 6,000 square foot lots should be adhered to instead of the 4,800. Well, so, I mean, we, we approved the, the change to the lot size in the zoning application. And okay. Uh, okay. so, but from a, from a plot perspective, the way that the, you know, intersections are lining up, it's a little challenging for me, Mr. Records. There's not an, there's not an established, can you, um, Mr. Reed, I'm so sorry. Would you mind holding up that exhibit just one more time? The, the, the actual aerial side that shows. So, I mean, it's not, there's someone's driveway um, wouldn't necessarily be a future curb cut. I'm struggling to see where there would be a true connection on the other side. We'd want to offset for traffic purposes. So on, on, the, on the map that's on our screens, we see a Johnson Street right. labeled somewhere up there, but I can't, 
I can't tell where it's that is. It's labeled on a map, but you, can, I can't see it on a, I was looking at an aerial on Google Earth yeah. here, and I can't see it there either. It doesn't go through anywhere, I know that. Yeah. So that, that'd be, I mean, I think they're establishing, truthfully, uh, the kind of future curb cuts that, you, that are going to need to be adhered to if the east side were to ever, you know, redevelop, but something beyond single family, large lot homes. Okay. Anybody, I mean, somebody else speak up and feel differently, but I, I can't see as requiring the alignment is going to accomplish okay. anything. Thank you. Okay. Um, I'll just note for the record, too, on this plat that there, because uh, uh, Mr. Box made this comment earlier, but there's 40.7 acres of open space, uh, and what would be required is four. So there's a significant amount of open space being provided in addition, uh, Mr. Brower, to the small lots, the smaller lots. A lot of open space to kind of offset that. So, um, any other comments or questions or thoughts? If not, I'll make my standard notation for the record that the design of the preliminary plaque conforms to the subdivision regulations. Uh, and the developer meets the access requirements established, and the design is also meets the requirements of the R1 zoning district. Uh, so, pretty straightforward. If there's any other comments, if not, I'll take a motion. I have a motion and a second to, I'm guessing, recommend approval. Yes. Outstanding. Uh, let's cast our votes when available. Why can't I see mine? And that application is approved. So that is the end of the agenda, but we had some items that we had punted to the end. The first one of those was item number 12. This is PC 10709, 9802 East Wilshire Boulevard. Is the applicant made his way here? Seeing no applicant, I would kindly request one of my commissioners to make a motion to continue this item to January the 28th. I'll make a motion to continue that item to January 28th. I have a motion and hopefully an electronic second. Excellent. Please cast your votes when available. And the continuance request is approved. Next item that we had punted was item 14, uh, SPUD 1288. Is the applicant present? I got the note that you were in the lobby. I'm so sorry. I apologize. I went to the wrong building and I walked in right as you finished. So. Well, I, I, I hate that for That's you. Okay. So thanks for staying with us and, and please tell us about your application. You're welcome. I apologize. Give us your name late. and address too. My name is Carl Zalanka, 1508 Copper Rock Drive, Edmond, Oklahoma. Um, we currently have two buildings out at the property on Sunny Lane. They are both zoned. We wanted to keep that zoning, but we wanted to go ahead and expand it. So we have some automotive retail, which would include mobile homes so that we could have a on-site um, demo as well, and then also having retail. Okay. Uh, Commissioner Privet, this is your award. Do you have questions or comments for the applicant? All right. Whoa. Presentation screen's going crazy. Uh. Yeah. Oh. Turn it off. All right. <laughs> this thing's we'll get there, right? Like Blinking like crazy. I didn't. There we go. Where are we at? Yep, what, that was what it. case are we on? This is item 14. Yeah. Okay. We've come I'll back to this. Oh, yeah, yeah. I remember now. No storage. No, I have no issues whatsoever. Yeah, I didn't have any either. Uh, the staff has three technical evaluations in the report. Are you in agreement with those technical evaluations? What was that? There are three items in the staff report that are basically contingencies of their recommendation to approve. Okay. Are you in agreement with those and aware of them, or would you like for me to read them? If you could read them, the person that was going to comes out with COVID, so I came in and standing okay. in the place. I understand. I'm happy to do it. Uh, TE1 is remove the mobile home and recreational vehicle sales use. They want you to remove that use unit. 
remove the mobile home and recreational. Correct. We're trying to get our dealer's license and they're requiring that we have a um, mobile home on site that would just be a demo. No one would live in it, but it would be one that would allow people to be able to come in and see. We have properties throughout Oklahoma and really it was our intention just to be able to take the mobile homes, have them go from the manufacturer directly to our properties that we have throughout Oklahoma. However, they're requiring us to have one on site at our location where our office is. I have an idea, let's come back to that one. T number two is the maximum number of driveways permitted on a South Sunny Lane Road shall be one. Any objection to that? No. Okay. TE three is that there shall be a 25 foot setback on the eastern side of the SPUD where adjacent to residential. Any objection to that? No. Okay. Outstanding. So back to TE one, is there a way we could allow a demo unit without specifically allowing the use overall? Could we say uh, limited to one you know, model home. one model vehicle, or is there something else we could use some other tool here? Somebody, anybody? Jeff, so JJ. Just, just for, so we're removing, um, I'd have to look at that use definition. So what, if it, go ahead. If it's just for, but you, so what, what is it, a little more detail on your operation, please? So you, uh, you mentioned that you, I mean, sure. people come there to kind of purchase the, or make arrangements or? That's the intent, however, so that's the requirement is that they want us to have a model home on site where our office is. So we're a real estate investment company, so that's what's in our building. Um, the other building we have is a lease, and we're currently utilizing that space as well with our materials and things like that for rehabs and um, construction. And originally we asked if we could go ahead and just get our dealer's license for mobile homes without having a model home at our office because we don't really intend for customers to come to our location. We're gonna take them and place them directly on the properties that we wanna sell with the, with the mobile homes. And so the home buyers would go to the properties that it would actually have the mobile home sitting on them. So we really don't anticipate that we would have any buyers coming directly to the location. However, whenever we were going through our requirement to be able to get our dealer's license, they indicated that we have to have a model home on site where our home office is that is our address where we're getting our license at. So basically we're planning on purchasing one, putting it there as a model home with really no intentions of anyone ever. Is it? Allow, allow the use further restricted or? to one model. That's all, yeah, that's what I figured. So right. it's 8300.20 and we're just gonna limit that to one model unit. Perfect, that'd be Agreeable. So if somebody's going to make this motion, Commissioner Privet, it would be, uh, we're just going to add a TE, no. or we're going to modify TE1, or do, I'm sorry, let's just delete TE1 and let's just say uh, TE4 would be uh, to amend 8300.20 to allow for one model unit for display purposes. Okay. JJ's shaking his head in agreement, so he likes that. So uh, <laughs> is there anyone here that wanted to be heard on that? item given that three of the four are staff at least for sure i'm going to say no so i will take a motion when you're ready to make it okay i'll make a motion to approve <clears throat> where are we at application spud 1288 striking uh te's one adding uh, te number four amended to uh allow 8300.20 uh, with one unit used for display and uh, two and three also. Excellent. I have a motion. Do I have a second? I have a motion and a second to recommend approval subject to the technical evaluations as amended. Please cast your votes. And that application is approved. Uh, last but not least, I thought we had another one yeah, 22 22 yes here it is thank you item 22 spud 1265 uh which is a e properties is that person present jj apparently you have information on this item we did talk to the applicant and there's no way she could make it here today she did say she agreed with all the te's with the exception 
of the sidewalk on Meridian, she would like that to be with any new construction. Can I ask why she couldn't make it today? Yeah, right now there's no sidewalk right there and we would prefer to have the sidewalk. She would like to do it as the code requires with new construction. I'm not sure there's any sidewalks outside of Meridian. Um, East side there's some at one point I believe. I mean, I get it, but this is like two locations off the corner. Um, so if there's ever a place to start with sidewalks, this isn't necessarily a bad one. I mean, I, I, I don't know how everybody feels. I'm not generally in favor of an applicant not appearing, but then asking us to amend an application. I, I don't, clearly nobody else here wants to be heard on this item. No, I think we should continue. Okay, does anybody object to that? No. Okay, I'll take a motion to continue the item to January the 28th. So moved. I have a motion. Do I have a second? Waiting on a button. I have a motion and a second to continue uh, to January 28th. Please cast your votes. And that item is continued to January the 28th. That is the last uh, item for separate consideration. Um, so the next item on our agenda today is additional items, communications, and reports. Uh, planning Commission committees. Um, I'll give a, just a quick update on the schools committee. We had a great call. Uh, I really appreciate Commissioner Coffey, Commissioner Privet, and uh, Commissioner Hinkle attending that. They each brought with them a guest, which was a school district representative. We had a great discussion. I don't know if you guys noticed in your packet that we had a letter from Mustang Schools um, expressing similar concerns to what Deer Creek has expressed in the past. Uh, and so I think we're going to see more of these. We had a, a great, great meeting. Staff did a wonderful job uh, following up on working on a map uh, that they're putting together that's going to be a tool. I'll have more details here, but as a reminder what we're gunning for, I'm going to send some information out tomorrow to the people on that committee and staff, um, notes from the meeting we had, uh, and then start to work on a draft letter. But the ultimate objective is to get a letter that all nine of us are willing to sign and send on both to the city manager's office and city council that says, hey, look, here's what we're hearing from school districts. Here are the things I think are concerns. Um, and, uh, you know, here are things, here are ideas we have that could be implemented to aid in this process with school districts as they plan and look to the future. Uh, it's a simple task, in my opinion, but I think a meaningful one is taking a first step. Uh, I think to, the, to, the, to that point, um, the uh, representative who was there from Yukon Schools was very appreciative of that we just even had the call um, and that we were listening or, you know, and so I think it's clear that there's needed to be more communication and I'm glad we're giving people a place to do that. So uh, that's the only update I have. Uh, other committee members on that have anything to share there or things you want to comment on? No? Okay. Uh, Planning Commission members, Commissioner Clare. Yeah, I'll just say I know we're trying to get acclimated to our new system, but I really think um, I think if we continue to voice motion and then confirm on the screen um, that that might be something we ought to consider because I know there was a couple times where we just had a motion and we didn't know whether it was approved or, den or deny. So I, I totally agree. I think the eerie silence of not knowing where people are and so I think speaking up and then once you've spoken up hitting the button it will be more succinct and understandable for the audience and frankly for, for like me to try to juggle who's doing what if I know you made the motion, I can repeat it. They've got it. It just it connects what we did before to what we do now. Yeah. I agree with you that I think that would help the flow of the meeting a little mm -hmm. bit. Um, so I appreciate that. Anything else? No. Uh, Commissioner Coffey? Nothing else? You got anything? No. Okay. Okay. Commissioner Previtt? No. Commissioner Hinkle? No. Okay. Commissioner LaForge? Okay. Uh, Planning Department? Uh, just a quick update, um, the sign code, as, as you know, we've been working on that as the first, uh, uh, first component of the code update. Um, we're still in kind of listening mode. We've uh, briefed council members um, a couple times. We're list we, we have had some meetings with sign industry folks um, and are continuing to do that, getting some good feedback. Um, so right now, that, that's kind of where we're at. We, uh, I don't have a specific timeline as to when that will be moving forward for public review, um, but it is, it is uh, being worked on and uh, that's kind of the status. Um, outside of that, that's, uh, that's all I've got. 
Thank you very much, Mr. Bowler. Uh, development services, okay. Municipal councilor. Citizens to be heard, seeing none. Other business, don't know of any. I'll take a motion to adjourn. Second. second. Motion a second, any, any opposed? Hearing none, we are adjourned.